Want to know what the movers and shakers of New Hampshire's performing arts are thinking? Welcome to New Hampshire Unscripted with your host, Ray Dudley. So yeah, I had already, I talked to like Michael Curtis about, about the, um, who else? How many groups there are, right. you know. There's like over, almost over a hundred, I think now. Yeah, well. Kind of five to hundred. And I said, well, you know, don't you think we're, we're starting to cannibalize talent? We're cannibalizing audiences? We're cannibalizing, you know, dollars? And he said, no, they can never have a, a, enough groups, but. See, the thing is, is that what's happening is that people, and that's fine. I mean, people do a show and all of a sudden they're like, hey, I can. I can do this. I can produce and direct and do my own show. And what happens is when they get to the point where they they get sick of putting their own money in, that's when they're like, oh, yeah, it's easier. Because honestly, people say, you know, could you do it all over again? I said, I wouldn't start my own company. If I did it today, Yeah. never would have. Because you can have so much more fun being at someone else's company. Yeah. You know, you know, and it's a hard work. There's it's no a lot of work to do, me. you know. And it's, it's uh, so you get to the point where it's like, you know, you want, I'm supportive. I mean, I... I think the more the merrier, it's great. Oh, hi. No, no, you're great. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, I think it's great. It's just one of those things where there's just so many now that, like you said, it's hard. We're all sharing the same actors. Nobody has a home theater anymore. Yeah. Where it used to be, if you were a Concord Community Players person, you were a players person. Yeah. And now it's the point where those of us who, I consider myself a players person, but only like every five or six years when I can zip away to do a part, yeah, you know, and, and a show that I really want to do. It's almost like professional um, athletes, right? Where there's yeah. no loyalty, you know, they trade them, tra if free agency comes up. And yeah. We're talking with Rob Dion from Majestic Theater. Hi, Rob, welcome. Hi. Glad to have you. We jumped in the middle of the conversation. Yeah, we just That's did fun. jump in, didn't we? That's the way I like it. That's unscripted, just make it yeah, happen. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I didn't bring any papers. Yeah, really. I'm so used to huh. not having any papers with notes. I'm like, yeah. nope, this is unscripted, we're just gonna do our thing. Yeah, we are, yeah. we are actually. Yeah. So yeah, so we were just talking about, um, we jumped in the conversation here about the talent pool and the number of groups that have popped up all of a sudden there's more groups out there right now there's names that i look at and i go yeah. who the hell is that well, i don't even get where, where are these people so that was one of the reasons why it's like we know we're not part of new hampshire theater awards right now we're just taking a break we just realized that we had to put our energy in a different direction but i liked when i was an adjudicator for the theater awards again one more thing to do but it got me to companies i never get to yeah you know, and I'm like, wow, I've never heard of these little companies up in. And I saw some great stuff over the years as an adjudicator. I'm like, wow. And it's and it's actually, there's shows that I picked for my season later because I saw them up north or, you know, in, in Peterborough or wherever. I'm like, okay, that's a really good show. I really like that show. So it's been great for that. But, yeah. it's, but there's so much now that it's just... Um, it's tough, you know, and this next season, we're actually producing 15 shows in 10 months. What? Yeah, it's insane. It's insane. What? And, and Why? Uh, well, because the thing is that we're running three venues now. So we have the Didier Theater shows, uh, January, February, March, April at the Executive Court. We use the Dairy Opera House for a bunch of the bigger shows. I and now we have the new Studio Theater, which you were at. Yeah. So what we've done is that we've had people saying... Uh, some of our older patrons that have grown up with us yeah. uh, are at the point where they don't want to go to Dairy. They're like... We love you, but we really don't want to go to Dairy because they figured Dairy might as well be Tewksbury, Mass. You know, and I get that. I get that. You know, I mean, I drive everywhere, so it's it doesn't exit bother me. seven to exit four. Right, and that's what it is. So, <laughs> so we put more shows in the studio theater uh, this coming year, and uh, we're running all the studio theater shows for two weekends this year. So it's you know it, it's good, and I see us kind of. You know, it's hard because it's like we're going to use the studio theater more, but it's like we're already maxed. Just you know, you were in a show yeah. the max of rehearsals and yeah. you know, tripping over each other, and and the bigger youth and teen shows have to be at the Dairy Opera House. So it's logistically, just not how do you do that? Ten shows. Very creative. Very creative shows scheduling. You said ten, yeah, wait, yeah. It's very creative scheduling. So um, so we have people on. We're always in repertory with uh, three, sometimes four shows. Like we right now, we're working on James and the Giant Peach and Adam's Family Junior uh, School Edition. And then Elf Jr. just, Elf, not Elf Jr., Elf the Big Musical. We're the first ones to do the full musical in uh, Community Theater in New Hampshire. So we're, we just cast that, so that starts rehearsal. Uh, and then in the cup, and the good thing is that, like, you know, uh, Jim probably told you we're doing Judy's Scary Little Christmas this year. You hadn't said that, no, Which is I, great. Yeah. Uh, it's only been done on one other time. It's a show that Jim had written uh, back when he was in L.A. And, um,. It has only been done, I believe, once in New Hampshire, which was at Madco. It was the last show that Music and Drama Company in Derry did uh, at the Court Street Theater billions of years ago. Mm -hmm. And we're doing it this year. We're doing two Christmas shows, one at the Studio Theater, one at the Derry Opera House. So the good thing is that that show doesn't start until after the kids' shows are done. So what we do is we try to, 
which are, you know, normally you get like that ten, eight to ten week process. We're thinking more of like a six to eight week process. Yes, yes. And what we do is we even make for sure, a musical, even for a musical, because okay. what we make, what we do is we make sure that we allow um, they get like one or two big days in the theater space, and then they have other days in the smaller rehearsal rooms. So it actually does work, mm -hmm. but if we were able to get more space, uh, as much as it's a little bit of a headache to have a higher rent. I'd probably take more space. Yeah, so you'd um, move out of the. Uh, we would just uh, if that we would if the gym were to move out next door. Right, which I mean, right. Steve's a great guy. He's the owner of the gym, and he um, his business is thriving. He's doing a great job there. So if they were ever to, to downsize, well, there's a lot of us fat people out there. Well, so. yeah, of course, you know. Oh, well, that's CrossFit though. So it's like you know, oh, like, pick up big things and put them. Yeah, down and, tires and all uh, that. Oh yeah, all the tires and, um, but it's you know it's one of those things where if they were to take. If they were to take less space, or if they were to move into a bigger location, which could happen, I mean they're growing, mm -hmm. then um, then we would probably take more space off the back of the theater, uh, just to grab us some more space. Honestly, if I could afford it, I'd take the whole building, but I don't really want a ten thousand dollar a month rent yeah, plus wow. utilities. Um, I mean, if you told me even five years ago we'd be paying our overhead would be what it is now, I would just laugh at you and say this is not going to be possible. Uh, well, luckily, we've had some, you know, studio theaters really helped us just elevate, you know, and be able to add more events that we're not renting a theater for and mm. stuff like that. So, you know, I think in this, I think this year is going to be, and this is our 29th year, next year is our 30th anniversary season. My God. I know, already. 30 I can't get years? It. 30 years next year, yeah. Okay. So let's <laughs> take a deep breath. <laughs> that was a great introduction. Yes. Um, so, so that's what I'm doing for 30 years. <laughs> what are you doing for 30 years? Yeah, yeah. Wow. So let's let's start in the early days. Okay. And so let's talk about you. Um, are you a New, ha New Hampshire native yeah. resident? Okay. Yeah. So how did you get? How did you start in this business? The high school, junior high, college. So what happened was I was uh, I was in the folk group at St. Marie Church. It's just kind of funny how things all come full circle. I was in the folk group at St. Marie Church, and our music director at the time, Dan Murphy, who I still talk to, who just moved back a couple years ago. He said, I'm doing this show at Milford Area Senior High School, um, I, which I think is now called just called Milford High School because Amherst built their own school. But anyway, so he was doing a show called Summings of Foot. And I was, I was a flute player back then. And he says, come and play in the pit for this thing. I was in 1985. I was in, in eighth grade. And I said, sure, I'll do it. So I went and played this show and absolutely just loved it. Loved doing it. Loved doing it. So... When I went to so and when I went to college for music, I ended up doing some theater then and all that. And then um, in 1991, um, well, fast forward to like I graduated in '89, 1990. I started writing musicals, and I was like, I'd written this, writing them, writing them. I had written this big musical called School Days. It's fun little show. And the very and so it was the summer of 1991. We decided, you know what? We're going to get a bunch of friends together, people I'd gone to high school with. Myself, Matt Morin, who's still with us, uh, Derek Lucci, Craig Olson, uh, and Ruthie Stevenson, and we would all let, let's just put this show on. So we put this show on at West High School. So we, and what ended up happening was, so then I wrote another full-length one called Moon Over the Day for the next year, and uh, that's one show. I actually, I wish I could get ten minutes just to sit down and start reworking that because yeah. it's you know it could be a really decent show if I reworked it. Haven't done it. That was '92. So, oh no, I have people out there. Um, <laughs> so, so we ended up doing original shows. So after doing a couple of years of that and writing a couple of children's musicals, I realized that I, just, I can't keep turning these out and go to college and all this stuff. So we started doing some, um, some other you know, musicals that are out there. Every summer at West High School, starting 91 through 94, we did summer shows. We did Something's Afoot, which was one of the first, which was probably the first non- um, uh, non Rob Dion show that I'd written, which is also the first show that I had ever done. We did that one. We did Man of La Mancha uh, one year. Uh, and then after what happened in 94 was uh, I've had more theater heartbreaks, I think, than I've had uh, relationship heartbreaks over my years. Dang. Um, because in 94, we kind of, uh, the city of Manchester did this big re regrouping thing with the schools. And they privatized all the janitors, and we couldn't be there anymore in the summers. It just wasn't going to work. They weren't allowing summers to be rented, so we were stuck. So the good news was, did your group have a name at the time? We were still Majestic Theater. Okay. We started, it was actually Majestic Theater Trust at the time. We dropped we dropped the trust later because people got really confused. Of are we a grant? Not a grant? Do we give out grants? What do yeah. we do? So in '95, we had been rehearsing at St. Marie's for many many years. 
because that was my church. And Father Mark Montmany, who was a very generous man, said, you can use our spaces to rehearse. And we were rehearsing at like St. Raphael's, uh, living rooms, all that stuff back then. And then, uh, so 95, we renovated what we were at with St. Marie. Is that, did you ever been in that theater? No, never. Uh, in the old St. Marie School Building, which is next to uh, St. Marie Church on the west side. And we were in that building for 17 years. Renovated the theater in there. We did all kinds of shows there. We started off as a summer thing. It used to drive Father Mark crazy because we went from a Wait, summer theater to like... years you were there? Yeah, we were in that space for, for 17 years. Uh, up until 2011, and what happened was... In Manchester, because of the station nightclub fire in Rhode Island many, many years ago, all the fire de- all local fire departments were starting to get stricter as far as sprinklers, stuff like that. They started with the clubs, which is why Manchester, like Uptown Tavern, all those old clubs in the Manchester, they all closed. They didn't have sprinkler mm-hmm. systems. Then they went to the public assembly places, and then they went to the churches. Um, and they came to a compromise with the churches. But with us, they had come to us... Um, I want to say it was back in maybe oh, uh, so in 07, I think it was 07, I was on a cruise, on a Mexican Riviera cruise, and I got home, and we were working on Sound of Music at the time, and I got home to a note on my door from Matt. Before you turn your computer on, before you do anything, call me, I don't care what time it is. I'm like, okay. I call him, and, he, and the week, this is that, that was like the first vacation I had taken forever. And the week that I was gone, (laughs) the fire department had shut the theater down. We had Sound of Music like two weeks later. So, long story short, we got them to give us a few more years with the idea that we were going to replace crash bars on doors and replace curtains that were flammable, all this stuff, treat things, you know, and work towards a sprinkler system. Uh, We moved um, Sound of Music to the Sacred Heart Parish Hall uh, at the church I do music at. And we did it there, for, and then we worked on We raised like 50 grand, all volunteer labor, to put on these fire doors and all this stuff. New egress. This was in the 90s? Yeah, like in uh, well, 2007. 50 grand back then? Yeah, 2007. So then after several years of that, we kept saying, I kept saying to the church, you know, and, you know, and I, I want to make sure, it's, I'm not talking against St. Marie Church by any means. They were so good to us. But I kept saying to the church, hey, we've got, I think it was five years or four years. Oh, no, it was three years. I remember three years. And I said, we had three years to do the sprinkler system. Where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Nope, nope, we're good. Sadly, the person that the church was talking to at the fire department was telling them, you guys should be fine, you should be fine. Fast forward to 2010, we find out, Wolf's at the door. The fire department says, if you're going to continue doing this, you need a sprinkler system. No ifs, ands, or buts. $350,000. <gasps> Because you got to put a sensor in every closet, every everything, because it's such an old building. So, so we ended up talking the fire department into giving us one more year, and we finished our season. We moved out of that building in 2011 into what was then the Ted Herbert Building. Your head spinning yet? Yep. <laughs> so another another theater heartbreak. That's the now, one I, I yeah, always think the, about. The, the, sa- the saddest day was when the day that we finally left that West Side Theater. It was like because we were always a West Side company, and uh, it was like oh. It was like the saddest day when we left there, going like shut the door for the last time, and um, so we moved into the Ted Herbert building, and we got that because I had known the Herberts since I was a kid, and Mark and Marlene Herbert, who owned that building we were in where the music store was, made us a really good deal, saying, "Hey, move in, we'll give you the suite, and you can start." Um, we were in that building for about five years, and could you perform there? We couldn't, um, but we ended up we ended up taking over more and more space. So by the time we left, we were almost, we were taking over a whole floor at that point. Um, the Herberts had just sold, the Herbert family had just sold uh, years earlier the music store to a chain, to Music and Arts. And about five years later, the two Herbert children, Mark and Marlene, again, who were very good to us, came to us and said, um, a couple of years before that, like 2014-ish, said, we're retiring, we're selling the building in the music school. Mm. You want to buy the music school? And I just laughed at him. I, I, first five times Mark Herbert said to me, you want to buy the music school? I'm like, Mark, no money. I have no money. So anyway, so he, so he kept bugging me. So he said, um, we'll make a deal for you. So they actually ended up selling us the music school in 2014, the Herbert family, after it being around for like 50 years. Uh, they sold us the music school business uh, for a percentage of the take of the next two years. 
um, which was a gift. It really was a gift because the equipment that we inherited, we could have sold off everything and broke even. So they were very, very good to us. But back in, so then, but then they ended up selling the building in like 2015 uh -huh. to a guy that met with us right away. And he's like, I'm gonna, I wanna keep Ed Herbert's here, Majestic Theater here. You know, we'll just gotta work together. We'll make this happen, all this stuff. Long story short, 2016, he tells me on like an end of August, yeah, I'm, I need you guys out before the winter. I can't afford to heat the building with just you guys in it this winter. Heartbreak again. So meanwhile, when we're at Ted Herbert's, we're performing in, we started performing in the old Notre Dame College space. Mm -hmm. uh, we did that for like three summers. We were moving everything, all the theater seats, all the tech, everything. We'd pull up a big semi because we had saved all the theater seats from St. Marie's. Oh my God. They were being stored. So we'd move them in, get a crew of people. We'd move in all those theater seats, put them up, put the tech up, all this stuff. And the first year at Notre Dame College, we, we were given like, I think it was like 12 weeks to do six weekends of shows. And then over the years, the person we dealt with left and we dealt with a new person and it went like this. And finally, we ended up having seven weeks to do six weeks of shows the last summer. And we literally got to the end of the summer. We all looked at each other and said, we just can't do this anymore. Wow. So that's when we started using Dairy Opera House for the bigger shows. And I love the Dairy Opera House. I wish it was in downtown Manchester. Mm. Uh, but So we still do our big shows there. But luckily... And we were also doing our dinner theaters that were at St. Marie's at the Chateau. So what happens to the Chateau? Did the Chateau closed? is sold, <laughs> and it's sold. <laughs> so I'm at the point where I'm thinking, God. nobody's going to want Rob Dion near them, because when they are near them, <laughs> they either close their businesses or they sell the buildings. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, from the exe so, so we ended up, which actually ended up being a good thing, because when we left the Chateau, and again, Janice and Yash Paul were very good to us over the years, we moved to the executive court when we really were able to elevate our dinner theaters. We still do four a year, January, February, March. You do. Still do them. And this will be, I, I want to say, our fifth or sixth season there, doing them for those four months. And they're great there. I mean, it still moves. We move in a stage, all the tech, everything. It's a bit of a challenge. Four times a year? Uh, four times a year, January, February, March, and April, first weekend of the month. Um, and then when we left Ted Herbert's, luckily, we uh, had a great realtor, um, uh, Dave Gambaccini, who's uh, he's with a new company now. Uh, but great, great realtor who's like, my goal is to find you guys a new home. I'm going to do it. And we looked at all these different buildings. One building we looked at on the west side. We were like, we, in the basement, there was like that uh, ring around the basement. And the landlord was like, oh, no, there was never water down here. And we could smell it. We're like, mm, no, I'm thinking. So we ended up finding, so we had we saw the listing, listing for the new studio theater. We saw 880 Page Street. And... I kept bugging. I'm like, I saw the pictures. I'm like, because it was a, it was a church. So I'm thinking, there must be a church. There was there? a four square church in there before us, and then it was vacant for like three years. And so I kept, we got we got to see this space. We got to see this space. So eventually, after like a couple months, we see the space with the landlord, who's the greatest guy in the world. And uh, Karen and I walked out of that space, and we looked at each other. It's like we've got to have this. You've got to have this space. I mean, it's moving ready. It's, How did he not think you would want to see um, it originally? Well, it was is that it was the it's, realtors talking to realtors, mm -hmm. and it was just our realtor was still was pushing, 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 and the other realtor again. He probably had stuff going on. I don't know what the situation was, but wasn't we weren't getting much of a response from that realtor okay. that was representing the property, uh, and so we moved into that building. So we so the fall we started renovations again. Uh, I don't know how much the reservation. It was another fifty or sixty grand Jeez. for the res renovations. And our current landlord did a thing where he would allow us to pay back. He would front it, and we would pay him back, and he would give us six months of reduced rent in exchange for it. Wow, that's really our landlord, is, uh, Jim McDowell, is a great, great guy. He's a, probably nothing as anybody else, but he's probably the best landlord we've ever had. He's yeah. just he loves it. We're there. He's he's great. He's you call him. He's right there doing. It's really, really good. So, uh, so we renovated. So, the, but the problem was we're still on Elm Street, and there. Um, now it's starting to get cold, and the landlord didn't want to give us any heat on Elm Street. So, we're in there, and at that point we had owned the music school, so we had all these little rooms, all these little space heaters, because there's no heat, mm -hmm. and uh, blowing fuses. I mean, I, I'd go into the fuse box and change the fuse, thinking, oh my God, is this gonna be the one that's gonna just zap me and. 
so then we hit like so we're because we're buying time before they because they're renovating because we have to build all those music studios and build the theater in the new space and it wasn't ready it wasn't ready and, wait um, all those all, all those little rooms you we built we built all those those are all new oh i thought yeah. that came that yeah, way yeah the only wow. thing that was there when we got there was the theater space was there um but the doorway that goes out the back wasn't there that was a big room and then all of that uh, looks like it's been there forever yep so um so mark bulldock from bulldock construction who's a who is the husband of the uh, woman who runs the ccd program at saint marie's again full circle again mm -hmm. it's like just these keep getting these recurring things he did all the construction and did a great job but it takes time yeah. you know it takes time so then uh so we're down the street we're you know we're waiting we're having these heaters it's like we go into the office in the morning it's 34 degrees karen's sitting there with her coat on it's awful well then Fast forward to the beginning of December, and pipes start to burst. Of course. Three in one weekend. So the landlord's answer to that was, let's turn the water. We're just going to turn the water off. So now we don't have bathrooms. So we have a music school with 130 students a week, three shows rehearsing with, you know, 60, 70 actors total, and we have no bathrooms. So guess how long it took it to get really gross. Uh, so we ended up just saying, okay, we had been moving, luckily moving stuff out every weekend. We were moving a couple of U-Hauls full of stuff. So finally, I looked at Matt. I said, you know what? We're moving everything out. This is it. This is like a Monday night. I said, Wednesday morning, we're moving out. Everything that's left, we're going there. Hopefully, we're going to have our occupancy. We got our occupancy that Thursday. It all worked out. Wow. But it was one of those things where it was just like, you know, we had been moving stuff. Oh, my God. We've been moving stuff for like every weekend for like two months. All putting it. So if you go to, um, you'll see pictures of like the theater space with like piles of stuff. Uh, and we just said, we got to do it. We just got to jump. We just got to do it. You know, and so we moved everything out, and we've been in that building now since January of 2016, and it's like the greatest thing that's happened to us. It's more money, it's more overhead, but yeah. we've been able to just elevate and do so many more things with that space that we could never do before. So, and you don't have to give me a big. So, are you are you profitable? Are you able to? We're you know we're we're still nonprofit. You know we're ne we're never going to be rich. Yeah. Um, really. I know it's hard to believe. <laughs> uh, nonprofit community theater is never going to huh. be rich. Huh. Uh, I know all the other theaters. I'm sure are laughing because oh, everybody yeah. has more well, money than they know. Of course, of course. Um, it, you know, it's it's um, it's we're, we're making it. Okay. You know, we're making it, and we're able to put a little bit aside. Um, you know, one thing that's helped is that we pay every month to a triple N, which the landlord uses to do like plowing and you know upkeep of the property and all that. And he's so frugal. He's great. We always get money back. So for two years in a row, knock on wood, we've gotten money back. So we've taken that and put it aside. So it's one of those things where we're not making oodles of money in. And, you know, some shows make more money than others. Right. The youth and teen programs do very well. Some of the bigger shows do very well. Some of the smaller shows break even. I always say, you know, we don't need to make hordes of money. If we can break even, cool. Uh, you know, we've done a couple of shows over the past couple of years that have lost money. Um, I mean, art was a perfect example of a show that was a great you show. Did art? We did art like the, that first year in that space. I started in Boston years ago. And had a great cast. It was a great show. And the greatest show nobody saw. Nobody, I couldn't give away tickets. It was awful. Uh, show was great, but nobody came. You know, and, and uh, but then we had Moonlight Magnolias, which again, three actors thinking, oh, it's going to be. And, you know, it was, it did so well. We did, we, you know, we, everybody came. So it's, you know, it's. It's uh, we make money on what we can, and yeah. then we put enough reserve behind. Um, you know, I will I will say that I, as a because I, I work as a professional musician, as you know too, which is a whole other full time thing that I do, yeah. uh, and I do very well with that. So I've been in a situation personally where I can um, help us in those months that are the cash flow maybe isn't as great as the other months, and I always get it back because I always say, you know, I'm 47 years old. I gotta retire. You're a young at some looking point. forty-seven. I know, but you know what? I'm like, I gotta retire at some point. It's like I'm not gifting this money. I gifted a lot of money over the years, and I still do. But you think you're gonna retire? I will Is eventually. That what? Okay. I'm like ninety-five. Okay. Um, <laughs> But no, so it's, well, you can you know, play a piano at Walmart. That's what it door. is. Yes, Walmart will have a piano bar by then, and they're <laughs> deadly. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Sweet Caroline, ham's on sale. Everybody. <laughs> Now call Try the Capicola. <laughs> <laughs> I always said that if I ever retire from doing theater and music, I want to be the person that puts the corn on the shelf. And those that are listening to that have heard me say that. Put the corn on the shelf. Put the corn on the shelf. But they're going to start me easy, like, with, like, you know, like, um, beats. Because there's not many varieties of beats. 
because you know corn there's like cream corn sure and, you know, yeah sweet corn sweet yeah, corn yeah. so they're not going to trust me with that but it's going to be someone's going to say rob put the corn on the shelf and i'm going to put the corn on the shelf put the corn on the shelf but sad, third shift sad. wouldn't that be a great third shift job? of course third shift be, yes. put the corn on the shelf yeah. so coming to a walmart soon yes <laughs> with his keyboard <laughs> with my keyboard put the corn on the shelf I want to ask you, how did the name Majestic come about? Where's that? So, um, What's the genesis of that? So, interesting story on that, too. Um, as you know, in Manchester, there were Palace Theatre, which I'm so glad they rescued this old theatre with the Rex Theatre. They're building a music venue, a smaller second stage, which is great. My sister and I went to that movie theatre when it was Manchester Movies back in high school. Every Sunday we would go. It was three small. It was a big theatre and two small ones. Um... And there we do in that building, which was, it was the Rex. I don't remember being at the Rex before my time. But many people don't know that there was actually another theater on that site originally called the Majestic Theater. A stage theater or a film theater? Well, here's the thing. It never, it never came to fruition because, and if you go back in articles, and I, I actually was recently thinking, i got to find these articles that I had just to post them because I think it's, it's interesting, cool stuff. But um, they had built, there was a shell of a building there that they were starting to build, if I remember this correctly in my 30 years, was um, was they were building this building as the Majestic Theater. They got halfway from building the building, and they there was a dispute on who owned the land. So, the, so it ended up just being half done, blighted forever. They never finished the theater. Mm. It was supposed to be the Majestic Theater. Years later, they tore down what was there, and they put up the building that's there. But that, that site was the site of the original Majestic Theater. And my whole thing was like, when I was starting, I was going, Majestic, wouldn't it be cool to have us actually finish the Majestic Theater? And mm -hmm. Manchester had, they had a Lyric, they had a Crown, they had a State, they had a, you know, all these other theaters, Palace, a Strand, they never had an actual, no one ever did a Majestic Theater. Uh, and maybe they did that because, you know, the Palace has been around and they figured Palace was very too close to Majestic. People still get confused with Palace and Majestic. Uh, I'm a little less apologetic now when I say, nope, that's the palace. Because, you know, palace does great work, too. You know, we're right. not... This, I always say there's room enough for all of us, yeah. especially in Manchester. So, uh, and, uh, and they're doing great, great things, too. Wow. So it's like we're doing great things, they're doing great things. We can all just be there. It's not, it's not one of those, you know, it's not like Walmart and Target. We're not fighting yeah. over turf. Uh, so that's how the name came, was Majestic Theater. And I got to actually I have to call Jen, John Clayton to find those articles because it explained that whole thing. That whole saga of what had happened, and if we're like, that would be a really good. Yeah, you should frame that. Yeah, you don't put it up because I mean, I think it's interesting, kind of cool. Yeah. This is how we got our name. So, yeah. Um, but yeah. So you, do you do any acting yourself? Because I, do, I have not known you as an actor. Uh, I, I've I've done some. I'm not as much anymore. You prefer it's, to be on the other uh, side. Well, actually, no. I prefer to be an actor. You do. To be totally honest, because. I can go into someone else's theater as an actor and just be an actor and not have to worry about who's paying for the lights and how are the, you yeah. know, how many ticket sales are there and you know, all that stuff. I don't have to worry about any of the other stuff. I go in and do my thing and I can go. I did a lot of shows over the years at the Letty Center. Yeah. Uh, another theater that Rob Diane's been involved with that's now closed. Uh, <laughs> Pattern. Pattern. Uh, but no, it, they Gatchel's retired actually, so that's fair. Uh, and now Epping Community Theater's in that space. Um, but no, it's uh, so I did a lot of shows at Letty Center over the years, starting with their previous theater. I don't know if you'd ever been in their theater mm -hmm. that was upstairs. No, uh, I've never been in the Letty Center. I'll tell you, they here's a they were had the little theater upstairs building was sold. They moved into an old church at Lads Lane, and their new theater was beautiful. It was beautiful, and then the Gatchels, after 42 years, retired. Good for them. Because Elaine and Bruce, they did every show. They didn't. So they're at Walmart now. At yeah, Street? they're at Walmart stacking corn. No, no, no. They're traveling, which is good. I just saw them actually last weekend. They're, they're actually going on vacation finally. Really? And traveling and yeah, then, go figure. Huh. Uh, not doing any theater. Going to see what? theater. Not going to see on theater. On a boat, on but, a ship, probably. Uh, yeah. Not doing Cruise any theater. Line. So I did many shows over the over the years. I was in some of their Gilbert and Sullivan's. I was the Beast and Beauty and the Beast. They were the first theater to do Beauty and the Beast, the full Beauty and the Beast Disney one in New Hampshire. I was Beast in that. I did. I was Albert in Bye Bye Birdie. I had, the last show that they did, in their last summer show, was Annie uh, three summers ago. I was Daddy Warbucks in that. Um, oh, so you were acting that? Yeah. So that I was, Recently? Oh, yeah, I so that was a couple years ago. Oh. And then recently, this past year, um, Summings of Foot came around again. Conquer Players were doing it. And I'm right. like, again, sweet part for me. I want to do that show again. 
So I auditioned for the show, and Jim Weber was directing it with right. Steve LaJoy, and I got the part of Nigel, which is a part I had played back in, like, two, uh, in Majestic back in the late 90s. Uh, I, was, I said I'm a much older and fatter Nigel than I was the first time, but I was able to do that show at Concord. And I hadn't done a Concord show since we worked together at Titanic yeah. and Joseph. I think right. Titanic was actually, that was the last Concord show I had done. Um, so it was nice to be back at Concord. It's a great company. Yeah. It's great people. Yeah. Uh, so I was able to do that last May. But, you know, it meant it meant taking time off from Piano Bar and making sure I had coverage at my theater. And so it's, you know, it, doing a show for me outside of Majestic ends up being a challenge, which is why I don't do it a lot much anymore. Um, but, you know, there's certain shows, if they were to come around, yeah. uh, Sue Shot just is, she's doing falsettos down in Massachusetts, and oh, I'm, yeah. I'm so jealous. Isn't she getting ready to go on the tour um, with the, um, the Christmas thing again? Uh, I think it's, hap it's happening before then. Okay. Yeah, but she, so she's doing that show, and I did that show with her twice, once in Concord, once in Manchester. Falsetto? Falsettos? Show I would stop the world to do again. Just, I love the show, you know, and yeah. was lucky to do it twice, and I'm like, I'd love to do is it Is it on the you know? docket at Majestic? Probably not. Um, it's, uh, are you familiar with the show at all? A little. It's, yeah. It's it's a I think it's a little bit. Um, we try to do stuff that's a little away from more, your demographic. Yeah, I think our yeah. demographic was you know even like with Judy Scary Little Christmas we're putting a PG thirteen on that. Uh, we did Best Little Horror House in Texas a couple of summers ago. Again, if you had told me ten, fifteen years ago we we're doing it, I was like, we're never going to do that show. And I'm like, the dirtiest part of that show is the title. Right. You know, we can do it well and not be offensive. Yeah. Uh, do you get we, pushback from from your audience? Not, or not much at all. When we were at St. Marie's, we did some. Uh, like it took me many years to actually have the guts to do nonsense. Seriously? Which is kind of funny. Uh, and I was always worried about what the nuns at St. Marie would think. And I'll tell you, when we finally did the first one, the nuns came. They loved it. Yeah. And I had talked to the nuns yes. at St. Marie's. I said, I don't mm. want to do something that's going to be offensive to you. And they're like, no, 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 that's fun, that's fun, you know. And so they would come. Who would have thought that years later we would have done all of the nonsense shows? You know, I became good friends with all Dan 90. Goggin. All 90 of them. And good, become good friends with Dan Goggin because of it. Um, but, you know, as, you know, the nonsense shows were, is funny because I was with Dan Goggin. I, I haven't seen him in a couple of years, but when I used to go to Florida, he has a place there. He'd meet up, we'd, you know, have dinner, all that. But he, um, he says to me, he's like, one day my mother said, you know, are you going to do write another show? And he's like, Ma, how many of these things can I write? You know, but he actually has a new show out called Johnny Manhattan. Uh, which is a show he had written before Nonsense with a friend. And they reworked it. Uh, it appeared at um, uh, one of the sh theaters in Michigan, and now it's available for production. But yeah, oh, so it is? Yeah, um, called Johnny Manhattan. And it's funny, you listen to music, and it's, you can tell it's Dan Gogg, and it oh, just yeah. has that same feel. Yeah. Um, and then now, one of the things that he started doing with the Nonsense shows was he started writing large cast versions. Because that's, that's what the company wants, mm -hmm. you know. But we did all the nonsense shows. But yeah, so at St. Marie's, I remember the only time we did Little Shop of Horrors, and I remember being in the line at the post office. This was oh, many, many, many years ago. And there was somebody from St. Marie's that approached me and says, I'm really offended by you doing that show. What? And I was like, and I'm like, okay. I said, well, did you see the show? And he's like, well, no, but you know what? It has this, 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 this. And I said, well, did you see the show? Well, no, it has... I said, if you didn't see the show, then we don't have anything to talk about. Because if you'd seen the show, you would have seen that we watered down Little Shop of Horrors as much as you can water down Little Shop of Horrors. A kid could have seen it, it would have been fine. So I think that a lot of times, like anything else, people were quick to react. I just heard no longer. Yeah. What could be offensive. You know, well, maybe because it's because I'm an adult. Well, right? because of the goddamns and stuff like that. Oh, which, for crying right, out loud. We wouldn't, we wouldn't put the goddamn. Honestly, even now, we would not put a goddamn in a show. I mean, it's very much like, you know, just because you know your demographic yeah. and all that. And you, I always tell my directors, and I give my direct, I don't micro, I hire a lot of directors now. I can't direct every show. Yeah. And I tell them, I don't micromanage them. I know you're going to do a good job on this show. Tell me what you need from me to make it successful. And I'm going to keep poking in once in a while just to check in and say, hey, where are we at? But I always tell my directors, you can say God. You can say damn. You really can't say goddamn unless you really have to. Oh well, then so it's you know then it's okay. But that's you know, interesting. And I'm probably being more sensitive about it than actually. No, that's I need okay. To be, that that explains you know? all. When we did uh, the man who came to dinner, there there was some rephrasing a bit, mm -hmm. and I couldn't figure out what was going on. Well, that explains yeah. that. I get that now. Okay, okay, that makes sense. All right. So yeah, so that's so that's we just try to. And like I said, I mean, I have a few patrons that would probably be offended by. So that. murder's fine. Well, you know, it's interesting. When we did Jekyll and Hyde, again, it was I a PG-13. It was a PG-13, and uh, 
we didn't sell any youth tickets. And our and our current seniors, the ones that came, loved it. Thought it was great. Um, I had a woman years ago. We did um, of mice and men. Again, one of my favorite shows. We did a Mice and Men, and we had a, a person call us. We lost a subscriber over it. They were very offended at the language in that show. Really? Um, and whatnot, not realizing it's it's John Steinbeck. It's, yeah. Uh, and so what happened after that was we knew we had a couple subscribers over the years that were sensitive to that stuff, so we would tell them. Or if someone would call and say, well, I'm not sure, we'd say, if you're not sure about this show, I w- might I recommend you attend this other show. Last thing we want to do is have you come to the theater be offended. So that's helped some. That's crazy. But yeah, people, you know, and everything, there's lots of different things that offend different people. So I'm not, it doesn't bother yeah. me. It doesn't I think bother about the me. Winnie just a year or two ago, we did The Graduate. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't be able to do The Graduate. Are you not, it, <laughs> she walked across that stage buck naked. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah, so there's Whoa. certain things that I just wouldn't, you know. Different demographic. Well, and that's what it is, you know. It's it's. But you. But one thing, if I've learned over the, and the demographic has changed. Some, but it's nice that you cater uh, to them. I mean, well, really you know, it but is, the thing is, that the hardest thing is that, you know, I always say, theater audiences in New Hampshire want to see the sound of music. Actors don't want to do sound of music anymore. Because there's been so many productions of it. It's like Annie. You know, it's like Annie. Oh, I mean, wow. I got Annie because I had done a lot for Elaine. She literally called me and said, hey, I need a daddy war. It's just like a year and a half or before the show. I, I'm doing Annie again next summer. This is like the spring of the year before. I don't have a war box. Do you know of anybody? I said, well, I played war box with Majestic. She's like, you played war box? And this, that was the first question. second question was, will you shave your head? And I said, yes. And I'm glad I did it. It was great. The only issue was she did the... The '74 version, the original Annie, yeah, and the the, the lines are a little different than the oh. newer version. So it was like the Warbucks lines. Um, he talks about red velour pants and stuff like that, and it's just, but um, but yeah. So it's that's the thing is that people don't want to do the chestnuts anymore. Actors don't, mm-hmm. and because what we talked about earlier, there's so much opportunity out there for actors. Right. They don't have to do the fiddle on the roofs anymore. Right. And that's what makes it hard. Yeah. So it's always that. So picking a season, always that challenge of what shows can I pick that actors are going to want to do, but that what audiences are going to see that will fit in the slots that we mm. have. Um, oh, this is, so this is an interesting, interesting conversation because since you, since you have to decide of the programming, I'm sure that there are shows you would love to do that don't meet that criteria. So do I, you do you? Is your audience in Manchester different than the one in Derry, which would be different than maybe your dinner theater? I mean, could you, uh, not if you really. wanted to do a show that might be a little bit more... Well, I mean, I think our biggest in. our biggest issue with Derry, I mean, with uh, the dinner theater in the studio stage is, and we added on, as you know, we added on the stage right. for that show that you did, uh, which was the best thing we ever did. Um, but the dinner theater stage is only 12 by 24. Ooh. It's small. So my whole thing is like, okay, I need a cast of 8 to 10, and a show that's gonna good that eyes are gonna like, but they can't all be on stage at once because you can't block. I mean, we had one show years ago. You can't do any blocking with that many people on the yeah. stage. So honestly, my bigger challenge is it's less about content sometimes, and more about what shows will fit uh, the thing. But the other good thing is that there's certain writers that I know. Oh, we've done this show by this writer. Audiences really liked it. Mm. Let's do this one by that writer. So we do a lot of that, um, you know, we found out like the Neil Simon shows, they always sell. Mm. They're harder to get now that he died, but they always sell. So that's a challenge. And then the dinner theaters usually, it falls into a format like, usually I have, typically I have like a couple comedies, a musical and a murder mystery. We shook that up a little bit this year. We're not doing a musical in the dinner theater. Um, but, you know, and then with the studio theater, I'm like, all right, the stage is a little bigger. It's a little bit... A little it's, bigger. Well, I mean, it's... it's Yeah, it's... <laughs> it's uh, not huge. 13 by yeah. 15, I think. Uh, no, fi- 13 by... Uh, 25 by 15 or something. Yeah. But it's still, you know, the good thing is that we have flexibility to build out wings if we wanted, stuff like that. And, you know, again, I wouldn't put a show that has 30 people in it on yeah. that stage. And there's no room backstage um, to move. Well, and yeah. there's no wings. But, right. see, St. Marie's, uh, we're used to that at, at St. Marie's. You went, you went off stage, you went down the stairs into the rooms. There was no wings. Mm. So it was always like, okay, what set piece can we build? What lame is set piece can we build that forms into different things? Oh, um, but so we're used to that at, at our space. You know, and with, in, 
you remember to the the studio space, we've only done a couple. We've only done maybe half a dozen shows there in total, if, oh. if that many. Because a lot this past year was only our second year putting shows in that space. The first year we didn't put any shows in that space. Uh, the first year we were in it, oh, yeah? 2016. So I want to say so 17 and uh, so 18 and 19 were the first two years we put shows in that space, and we learn new things about every show that we do there. Mm-hmm. And honestly, it's for us. We're always looking at how can we make the actors' experience better. You know. Uh, things like that one door on stage left that was in the way. We never even, you know, I mean, I came yeah. in one day, it was off the hinges. Yeah. I think I went off the hinges that day, too. I'm like, you took my door off the hinges. Uh, I get very, very, uh, very upset about little, little like, you huh. ruined it, you know. I've worked so hard. Uh, and it was easy. We just flipped the door around. So now the door's not in the way, you know. And, um... You know, some, oh, and then you've got the competing with the the music school there. That was right, a, a right. minor issue, and it was. You know, and that it's one of those we all kind of cohabitate. Yeah. You know, I always tell people, oh, it's Monday, you're gonna get drum lessons, but you know, we're working on stuff even for that, like you know, adding another doorway back there, you know, to help buffer that sound. Um, the hard thing is we have central AC, so no matter what you do, you're gonna get it through the ductwork. So that's the issue there. But you know, you learn to just kind of work around each other and. You know, you make it work, you know, and it's always people know that on Mondays and Tuesdays we have drum lessons and it's loud in the theater. Um, no different than when we hear them. Mm-hmm. Uh, another issue that we've dealt with this year is the gym next door. You can't play loud music till 7.30 on Fridays because we have a show that starts at 7. And they're great. I mean, I just have to say, hey, reminder, we have a show yeah. this week. And it's go pretty loud, that. too. Yeah, you know, and they, you pick up the big things and put down the big yes, things. Yes, yes. But, you know, you, you learn that stuff by, by you know, and we're going to try that for another year. And honestly, if it still doesn't remedy, we put another wall in front of the wall that's there. You know, we, there's ways to dampen the sound. Yeah. So. so, you know, with each show, we learn more things in that space. But our biggest thing is, you know, always how can we make... It, after every show, how do we make it better for the actors? How do we make it better for the audience mm-hmm. members? Because uh, audience members love the space, you know, and the actors like it's the a intimacy. Nice little space. They yeah. like the intimacy right. of the space. So, yeah. so I think it's you know every space has its drawbacks and its issues, and you just try to overcome those. Yeah. Every theater we've ever had is. I mean, Derry Opera House has issues. You know, the wings at Derry aren't huge either. Right. You get thirty kids well, on that stage. It's and, a town hall, basically. I yeah, mean, it's really know? not. And so you just learn to adapt the way you need to adapt yeah. you know it's um so it's you know nothing's impossible and i think that's why we survived the 30 years through however many theaters we've had and whatnot because we've just said you know what all right there's an obstacle we're just gonna we're gonna yeah. we're gonna plow through we're gonna make it happen yeah you adapt uh, and i have a lot of good people over the years that have just been in our corner and said you know what uh i'll name you know the bean foundation is a perfect uh, um they give out grants and they gave us a grant both times when we lost the theater. We lost the St. Marie Theater. They gave us a grant to stay alive. And then when we lost Elm Street and we renovated the new theater, they gave us a grant to stay alive. Oh, so they've been. Oh, so really you know, there's good. a lot of play, people that are in our corner. And I remember seeing someone years ago after we lost, I think, the second theater, and and um, she's like, she goes, "You guys just won't die, will you?" <laughs> and I said, "No." I said, "We've and I say we worked too hard." Yeah. We've worked too hard just to throw in the towel. So now we have a 15-year lease in our current space. I took the longest lease I possibly could. 15 years, wow. Possible long, longest lease I possibly could. So yeah, I had to personally time. guarantee it yeah. myself because you have to have a name on there. So if uh, Majestic... You will be working so, at Walmart. So I'll be working at Walmart. Put the co- I may have to put, like, you know, the, the seafood in the cooler because I pay more for that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can carry an accordion and play. I can. Water. I can. Yep. Yep. With gloves. Yeah. yeah with the fingers cut out. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Walmart. Would you like a card? So okay, I want before I close out this segment on the theater um, because I want to get to talking about you. Um, I know. I keep coming back to the theater. That's just what I no, do. No, it's okay. I just that's what I do. It's no, just, that's I'm fine. So ingrained. Yeah. No. 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 And, and, and it's what we have in common. Yeah. Right? So. Um, I, I just saw on Facebook you're having a fundraiser coming up, right? Yes. That's uh, some of a disco? 
Yeah, we have a theme every year. Okay. Uh, last year was the circus, which is great. They made like turned the theater to like a big top. It was great. Karen, our development director, is Karen Bissett, is very creative. Uh, she's a, she's a visual artist, so she does a lot of these really cool things. So this year the theme is disco. Uh, November fifteenth at the Studio Theater, eight eighty Page Street. Uh, we have raffles, we have performances, we have a live and silent auction. We've got food, we've got drink, we've got. Yes, we've been doing the auction for a very long time. We used to do it at St. Marie's. We did it at the Manchester Community College a couple of years, uh, and this will be the third or fourth year we've done it in our space. Uh, and it's it's a really great event. It really is. So and that's our biggest fundraiser of the year. I was going to ask you. It's our biggest successful. fundraiser of the year. So um, so every year we have a theme, and this year I'm like, you know, we're like, what do we want to do this year? Uh, so let's let's do disco. Uh, so it'll be fun. Just riding off the Mamma Mia. Uh, you know, it wave. wasn't even that. It was just no. It was just like you know. I know we're the only theater that hasn't done Mamma Mia yet. Yeah, right. I know. Uh, you, you know, are. I, I always on that. I always wait till everyone does it, and then I'm like, okay, now we're going to do it. And can I rent that from you, and rent that from you, and rent that from Perfect. you? Perfect. Brilliant. Yeah, just because you know, uh, it's like Shrek. We were the last theater to do Shrek, Shrek Junior, the kid one forever. But yeah, so it's November fifteenth. Uh, you can get tickets online. It's on the uh, website www.majestictheater.net. Six six nine seven four six nine. It's all there, uh, and as we uh, get closer to the event, we'll start adding lists of items that we've got. So if you want to check that out as well, but it's it's a really great event. Karen and, and her uh, committee do an absolutely amazing job. I handle the more the performance side of it mm -hmm. um, and the marketing stuff that goes with it. But it's uh, we've done it. This is our fourth annual. No, it's our fourteenth annual. Sorry, Karen, I didn't mean fourth. She's like, we've done how many of these? Uh, it's our 14th annual, so that should show you how long we've been, and that pretty much coincides with around the time Karen started working for us. Um, so she was able to really help us elevate the event, and every year we do better than we did the year before. Do you? So is that your unveiling as well of the new season? New season, uh, we already un we already um, unveiled it to our subscribers. Yep. Uh, and it's actually online as well. Okay. It's actually on our YouTube channel and you on Facebook. You want to talk a little bit about that? Um, there's so many shows. So, so I'm just gonna I'll just sure. throw them all out sure. at you. Just so verbally vomiting. So out. yeah. So it's and I didn't bring my list because I was. This is unscripted, you know. So it is. I did not. Is, he yeah. says do not bring any papers. That's he good. threatened me. He was gonna like take a lighter <laughs> and burn them. Uh, and I, I believed him. I believed him. Uh, so I got that kind of face. Uh, mm. So so yeah. So the so the kids this year. So the kids and teens. Every year we add kid and teen programs because we can't accommodate the numbers. Again, that speaks to there can be many of us doing stuff and there's enough for all of us. So the kids right now are working on James and the Giant Peach Jr. in October, which is uh, written by the same writers as Dear Evan Hansen and The Greatest Showman. Uh, they're also The teens are doing Adam's Family School Edition, which is like Adam's Family the Musical, except uh, for teens. Yep. That's in October as well, Dairy Opera House. From there we go to Judy's Scary Little Christmas in December. Which is a great musical. I'm so excited we're doing it, uh, and and so that's going to be the first weekend of December in the Studio Theater. Elf the musical, which is again you saw the movie Will Ferrell. There's a musical version of that at the Dairy Opera House. It's a big family with we had uh, almost 50 people come out to audition for that. Wow. Unheard of. We don't yeah. get that. And so we cast like 30 something, and then after that we go into Dinner Theater, and then uh, we go to two shows a month: January, February, March, April, May. So in January, we've got um, The Good Doctor by Neil Simon for Dinner Theater. Uh, and we've got uh, Fiddler on the Roof Jr. with the kids and the teens. Oh, that's great. And every January, we try to do a, uh, a junior of, a ch of an old chestnut. Because I'm a firm believer that the kids growing up should get to know the sound of music. They should get to know Fiddler. Good. So we've done, like, last year was Music Man Jr. The year before was uh, Bye Bye Birdie. So, it's, you know, we try to do stuff that's... Um, and then in February, we've got... Uh, Two options for you to bring your special someone to, if you have a special like someone. Like Valentine's Day stuff? Um, although one's a little bit of a twisted show. So the first one is, um, oh, what is the first one? It is... Dracula. Dracula, yes. See, I knew I should have brought the list. Um, oh, the first one is Things My Mother Taught Me, uh, which was written by the same writer as Nana's Naughty Knickers, which we did years ago to huge... I mean, people loved it. And uh, also that month we've got uh, the, uh, John Cariani, his show Love Sick. Uh, he wore oh, yeah. Maine. Someone else is um, We too. saw that. Well, Hatbox did it got a couple it. years ago, got it, got it. and I was like, again, adjudicated the show. I was like, I love this show. And the good thing is, it's a bunch of little scenes, so it's easy to rehearse in our spaces. So, but that one's um, they say it uh, an unromantic Valentine or an unromantic comedy. Uh, so Love Sick, and then March. Uh, let's see, March we've got uh, King of the Moon. 
King of the Moon, which is written by Tom Dudzik. Tom Dudzik has written, uh, he wrote a show called Over the Tavern, which we had done years ago. This is the second half of that, second of the, of the there's three shows. You don't have to have seen the first show to get it, but it's just, it's, it's uh, He's a really good writer. He's he, these characters he creates. You almost think you're watching a Neil Simon show in some ways, because the characters are really well fleshed out. Good yeah. show. Uh, See, so that was uh, March. Uh, and then March we have Disney's The Little Mermaid Junior in Derry with our teens and our and our youth. We, and all of these are being rehearsed all the same back time. to back to back. Oh my yep. God. Um, and then let's see, April we've got Love, Sex, and the IRS, which has been done a few times. Fun show. Yeah. Uh, and we also have Steel Magnolias, which is a show that I've wanted to bring back since we were at St. Marie's, uh, and that's in the studio theater. Love, Sex, and the IRS is a dinner theater. Uh, and then in May we go to uh, Spam a Lot School Edition. Oh. We're trying to do a teen show that not wow. everybody and their mother has done 17 times. So there has been a few theaters that have done it. So we're doing Spam a lot. I didn't edition. know there was. A yep. School. Wow, that's it's, really again. Good. They've taken it, and, um, uh, and then our play in June, and then we go to one show a month. And uh, and also in May, it's we'll, going to seem like a vacation. Yeah, and I know you're going to bring this up, but May we're also going to be bringing back the Rock and Daddios, which I know we're going to talk about. We will. Um, so because they were. S- Tremendously successful. We had them in August, so Good. we're gonna have them in, in May, and then in June we have um, what is our? Oh, we're having. So what they've done now? This is really cool. So now you know Agatha Christie wrote these little shorter stories. I didn't know that. And what they did is Sam French took three of them and they created these three one acts in one show. There's like there's a, there's a whole series of them now. So we're doing a show called. Are they all whodunits? Or they're all they? whodunits. All whodunit thrillers. All this stuff. So we're doing a show called uh, it's Agatha Christie's The Rule of Three, and it's three one act horror suspense mysteries. Really excited for that because it's like you're you're going to come to the theater, you're going to see three shows that night, That's and they're smart. not you know each one's like maybe thirty five minutes, so they're not, you're not going to be there for like four hours. Don't worry. Mm-hmm. And then um, every July we always try to do a big musical, uh, and this year we decided we were going to do Secret Garden, which we hadn't done since we did it at St. Marie's. Hugely um, popular. Yeah, it was just, it, it, it's a show. great show. It's yep. such a great show. So we're going to do that in July. That'll be at the Opera House as well. And then um, August, we're just going to do music events and stuff like that, just to kind of... So you're doing a musical at the um, Opera House there? How do you like the acoustics there? I don't it's mean it's that. actually not too bad. Um, we actually, Keith Bolandry, who's been our music resident musical director for years and years and years, we actually put the orchestra in the balcony. Seriously? So if you're sitting in the balcony, it's off to the side here. Oh my here. gosh! And it works. It works really well. It really works well. You know, we're not using a 50-piece orchestra. Usually, yeah. it's about you know six to eight to ten people, but it, it it works fine. It really works fine. So that's our big musical, and and I'm already starting to think about the, what the 30th anniversary. What's going to be our I big July musical? I want it to be something big. So. Yeah. There's a couple of shows that are in my head, and, yeah. and I'm more. If we are they the shows rights. that you personally really want to see done, or are they they're, shows that you both. know are going to be drawing? They're both, okay. both. They're both shows. The July musical, we try to do something that's going to really the actors, because you know it's July. You know yeah. who wants to do a show in July that they really don't want to? It's you like, did eh. Jekyll in, in July. Yeah, and we yeah. got a cast of people that were like, yeah, we want to do it. We still have plenty of summer left after. We stopped doing an August show for that reason. Is that it was so hard to cast an August show because. Actors are like, I want to be on the beach. I don't want to be rehearsing. And that's why for many years, people will remember, that's always when we did nonsense. Mm-hmm. We always did it in August because we precast it. And then we would rehearse it a lot, take a break during the summer, some, and then bring it back a few weeks before and put the show up. Same people and all that. But when we ran out of nonsense shows, we were like, all right, now what do we, what do, we do? Dan, you got to write another show. Uh, no, he's not going to write another nonsense show. We've done them all. The only one we haven't done is Nonsense Amen. Which is the is first? Have you done one with animals yet? There could no, be there's no animals. Dog sense. No. Dog sense. <laughs> oh, that's a poopy show. <laughs> but the only one we haven't done, we have not done um, Nonsense Amen, which is the first Nonsense show, but men dressed in drag playing nuns. Again, talk about what might be a little bit much for our audience. <laughs> I remember Palace did it billions of years ago, and we were doing like the Christmas one later that year. And I remember people calling, and I saw, knew people that saw that show at Palace and loved it. They thought it was so funny. And other people would call and say, "We just because we is this is this is all this is like nuns, right? This is women, right? This is because we just saw nuns at St. Man, and it was offensive." Oh, 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 
you know, and they've probably gotten calls over the years of people saying, I just saw this show at Majestic, and I, it's not going to be like that, is it? You know, we all get those calls. <laughs> Terrible. So, yeah, so that's our season. And if you go online, um, our subscriptions are going to be online very, very soon. We're currently selling subscriptions to our current subscribers. Uh, they have until October 15th to do that, and then they go on sale to everybody else. Uh, but if you go on our YouTube channel, um, I'm going to say Majestic NH603, then you'll see it. We have a preview video uh, of our um of our, uh, our season. And also, if you click on our podcast, because I do a podcast for WMNH every other week, right. go back on those, you'll actually... We'll, I've had several season preview weeks, so... you have a limit on subscribers? Um, do, no, Do they no. get a discount? They get a huge discount. Yeah, it's $160. So if they all... If you sold all your subscriptions... Oh, cause no, there's still... Because cause the thing is, is that with our... We have the most flexible subscription in the world. Like, uh, the subscription, basically, for $160 a person, you get the four dinner theaters which that right there pays for the subscription, and then you get two flex tickets to use for any other show. And oh. then beyond that, if you want to see all the shows, beyond that, you pay $10. So it's one of those things. Ten bucks? So yeah, so it's one of those things as a subscriber, you get the four dinner theaters, you get the two flex shows. Okay, that's seven. That's six. I mean, that's six. I can't count. Public that's, uh, that's six. And then, so the other eight shows, instead of paying $15, $20, you can pay 10 bucks and get in. So and it's we crazy. allow them it's and we allow subscribers to do exchanges, all that stuff. So it's really been we have subscribers mm-hmm. that have been with us forever and ever and ever. I can see why. Um, so yeah, so those will go on sale. And the good thing, the reason why we can do as many as we want because uh, it's a flexible thing. Where if you want to come to the dinner theater on Friday in January, but Sunday in February and Saturday, and so it's not like you're buying a specific seat. Uh, which is what most theaters do. Yeah, they go, you got to right. buy the first Friday on every one. Right. Um, so, yeah, so that's why we can do it. But wow. we've kept it at 160 for many, many years. Um, we appreciate the loyalty. Yeah. You know, and... Yeah. Uh, it I, is, you know, there's a lot to be said. But I, but I wish that, but I wish that they more would take care, make, take advantage of that ten dollar ticket thing. Cheap, I keep telling yeah, them. That's crazy. Because you know, it's like anything else. It's like you know, people don't read, and then you're like, well, you can never. Ten, what do you mean I can never? Ten, yes, you ten, can ten bucks, bucks to see a show in this day and age. Yeah, ten bucks. Even community theaters getting to be outrageous. Well, you know, our musicals, we have to. We went kicking and screaming to twenty bucks yeah. on the big musicals because we just have to. It's, I mean, you know, the. I mean, I remember the rights for like, you know. The rights for like two weekends of a musical at the Dairy Opera House, the rights alone are like three grand plus. Yeah, I know. and that's three hundred twenty-seven seats. So it's not like we're. I always say I, don't, I, I always I always put kudos to the palace because honestly, professional theater, so they're paying more. Their ticket price is higher, so they're paying more, and they have eight hundred and eighty seats. That royalty bill for that many shows must be like oi. Right. And you hear they're paying their actors on top of that, right? I mean, it's just in the overhead. Yeah. I mean, our just... our our rights for the for the fifteen shows this year that we did, our rights, all said and done, were probably between twenty five thousand and thirty grand, Man. just for the rights. So what happens is that we end up, you know, we're always and our thing at Majestic is like, how can we elevate the production values? That's always a thing, but yeah. there's not a lot of money. Yeah. So we really rely on the goodwill of, I mean, Concord Players is a perfect example of someone that yes. is so generous. You know, we borrow costumes from them. We, a lot I of borrow set pieces it's, from yeah. them. I borrow Furn- furniture. Yeah, it's, right. it's just, um, you know, and we're the same. And, and it's funny because we learn from them. And, like, if we're not using something and a theater wants to borrow it, I'll say, hey, throw an ad in, my, in the program if you can, and we'll just lend it because we've learned that, you know, because Concord's been such a good steward for the... 90 or something years they've been around right so um, and they have everything if you've been they to do. their oh warehouse oh my god they yes. have everything that's <sighs> crazy what they've got down there well Winnie has quite a bit too don't they yes they, they do. have quite a bit they've done a good job of building up yeah over the years yeah, as well they, sure have. Uh, they don't lend out as much stuff i think just because of a lot of they're using a lot of their stuff and yeah. um but you know i know but i know that even Winnie, if i called him and said hey you've done this show do you have this one and they had it then and if they didn't have it, they would tell you where you could yeah, probably Yeah, I mean, there. so that's, yeah. you know. But and that's the thing, too, with the theaters, too, over the years, is that th- we talked about there being so many companies. The companies that are very much like, we do our thing, and, and, and we're just going to, they don't last very long, because you have to learn really quick in New Hampshire theater. We're all one family of what we're doing. We're yeah. all doing the same thing, and if we can't share, if we can't play nice... That. And I, it took me a while to learn that. I mean, there was several years at Majestic, that, early Majestic, that I was like hardcore, 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 and uh, made some mistakes over the years, you know. And you know, one was with the Palace. You know, I made a mistake with the Palace. 
and this was in the recent history back in their 100th anniversary, I did a marketing piece that that was, that, and you know, I'm not going to get into it, it was not right. It wasn't right, and I got called on it, you know, and I said, you know, and I'm like, you know what, and I apologized. I said, you know what, no, that was not, we shouldn't have taken that angle on that mm -hmm. marketing piece because it was not right. We should have been celebrating the fact that you've been around for 100 years, you know, and so now, so you learn that, but you know, a lot of times, though, you learn that after time of like, okay, you got to play nice with others, otherwise it's just not, you're not going to be alive. Right. So... I wanted to punch in one more uh, uh, piece here about adjudicating Gina, for, because I have not watched the Gina and Justin show. Oh, that's yet. okay. I have no, not yet. You just did that one, didn't you? <laughs> that was one of the first ones. Actually. Oh, wow. Um, okay, but that's I'm behind okay. that. <laughs> well, I just want to say, talking about ticket prices, it's a good reason to be an adjudicator. Yeah, honestly, it is. It was I adjudicated for that reason, it, because I got to see shows I would never see because I can't. Yeah. A, I'm not going to drive normally to North Conway yep. to go see a show, but I did to adjudicate it, yep. and it was a great show. Yeah. M&D does great stuff up yep. there. And so, you know what's funny? I never got assigned M&D, which is very weird, um, which is sad, but I got assigned, like, I was at uh, Weathervane a couple times. I saw yep. Floyd Collins at Weathervane. Did you like it? Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, it was so I haven't good. been up there. It was so there. good. And even, like, you know, uh, Branch River Theater in, in Moultonboro or near, near Peterborough, um, that's where I first saw Dancing at Lunasa, and I was like, "What a good show!" And they did a good job on it too, you know. And some, you know, some of the stuff you see is right. not great, right? But it's, uh, but for me, when every time I'd have to go to Little Tin Opera House to see a show, I would, ah, I'll make a night of it. I'll stay at the little motel yeah, there on the right. highway, and I'll make, you know. So my and, wife and I do went to yep. dinner, then we go yep. see the show. Yeah. Yep. So it's a nice little getaway, especially in the yeah, summer. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I, I miss, uh, I miss the Judy King, but I don't. I don't miss the time it takes for me to do it. Yeah. I was always that person. Sorry, Brian. Well, it's not like you're sitting um, around doing nothing. I well, that was what it was. It was getting, I got to get that report in. And I took, and I was good. I, when I adjudicated, I took like stupidly good notes, but it was just a matter of sitting down and physically doing it. Yeah. But when I would go to Little Tin to do a show, I would literally, I would see the show, get a pizza and beer, and I'd go back to the hotel and I'd type the report right there. Uh, but yeah, thank you, Brian, because Brian was very patient with and me I over the years. Yeah, I mean. um, but no, I was always that person that I was late on a ballot when I said, you know, I, I just... And then there's a larger thing, too. And you have your theater words again. It's a great thing that brings people together. But as, as, a, as a theater, we just said, you know what? We need to focus on making things better for our actors and our community that are for a year or two and say, okay, we're going we're gonna to do events and stuff that's going to help um, support and appreciate our people more instead of like being part of a bigger thing like that where it takes you know and so you know so we're sad not to be part of it but I think it was the right decision for the time and, and I and, and kudos to Justin and, and Gina that that's a lot of work and I'll tell you nobody wants to take that on it's too big of a monster now yeah and I um, worry I worry that when they finally say oh we're, not, we're just not gonna do it anymore that no one's gonna be able to step it's up. It's a huge people are gonna because everyone's so busy with their own stuff. Yeah. they're gonna go. Well, it was great while well, it lasted. I know. You know, and that's too bad because it's too good of a thing to. My uh, wife has really fallen in love with it. My wife, my wife is not a theater person. Mm -hmm. She despises theater people. <laughs> despises them. Really? Yes. Well, it's an except ego, for you. All the ego. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I force her. You know. I, so anyway, she but she loves the theater awards. Yeah, because it's it. They've done such a great job in evolving the the show. Remember the first couple of shows of the Palace? Yes. Oy vey. Yeah. Oh, thank God. And then the last couple of shows. I didn't see last year, but the shoe, shoe, the shoe shows before that. Wow. I you know. Ju you just sit there so proud to be part well, of productions, right? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. proud of like what we do in the state for theater, and what we all do in the state. And for it's such theater, a showcase. You know, and it's, yep. And, and it's an entertaining evening. On top of that, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, you can go even if you don't have a, a dog in the race. You yeah. know, you can go and just watch. Yeah. And that's what my wife loves about. It. She doesn't know anybody anywhere and just loves to go watch. Yeah. She gets all the little bits and pieces of the the highlights of the shows throughout yeah. the year. She loves it. And it's well done. Yeah. Kudos to those folks. Are they at Capitol Center again this year? I'm guessing, yeah. 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 So Where else are you going to house that many people? Yeah, that's, that's yeah, the other hard part, too. Is there's not a lot of... Because, yeah, they were at Palace for a few years and Pinkerton for a few Pinkerton. years. Pinkerton. Uh, and that was... That well, was you park a mile, million miles away at Well, Pinkerton yeah, except now. for that, yeah. You have and if to, it's like, cold... You have the dog in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, that... I mean, uh, having it in Concord has just been brilliant. Yeah. You well, and that's the funny thing, that's parking, the funny thing too, about parking, because I always say with the executive court, I don't know if you've ever been to any event, mm -hmm. It's near the Yard Restaurant in Manchester. I said it's the only place in the whole city that actually has plenty of parking. 
it is huge lots you know because everywhere else you go i don't care where you go nobody has i mean you go to the audi i mean i love the audi but again yeah you have to find that little nook and right. like, where's my secret nook to park uh, because it's just hard to park yeah you know and but you want to do it you do it right. you make it work you know it's um well the audi uh, does it too they, they do it so let's talk about rob dion okay so I want to, before we even get to the Rockin' okay. Daddios, because I, I, I love the Rockin' Daddios and the whole thing that's going on there. So I want to talk about your, your piano playing at, at the bar yep. that you do. So how long have you been doing that? So I started doing Piano Bar back in 2005. At and the I, same bar you're at now? No. So I started doing it at the Breezeway Pub in Manchester. Did they close? No, it's, no they didn't. <laughs> No, but I think it's a more of a, it's less of a gay bar and more of a swingers bar, though, I hear. But I have not been there in a while. Um, <laughs> no, they did not close. That's a good question. Um, now, if they close next week, you know I'm going to be in deep trouble. Um, so, yeah, so what happened was there was a bartender that was doing uh, a piano bar night with um, a guy named Kenny, who was an actor at the Palace Theater at the time. And he says, oh, I'm going to try this piano bar thing. So, so, anyway, so Kenny did it for a while. And then... Like all the a lot of the professional actors at Palace, they don't just work there; they work throughout the country. They pull people from all over. So Kenny moved on to his next thing, and then the bartender was like, "Geez, I don't have a piano bar guy anymore. Do you want to do it?" So I said, "Yeah, how hard can this be?" So I always huh. remember the first thing I did is I set my little keyboard up, and I had the Broadway fake book. I put the Broadway fake book down, and I opened. Wait, the page. okay. So what's the Broadway fake book? Well, the Broadway fake book it basically it, it gives you like just the the lyrics. The melody line and the chords. So it's like a watered down version of the pieces, usually on one sheet. And it has like, the Broadway Fake Book probably has, you know, 6,000 songs from all these shows. Wow. They have fake books for everything. So I put down the Broadway Fake Book, I open. Hey, Annie. And I start to play Annie. So I, I ended up being at the Breezeway a very long time. So as time went on, I would play. And I remember when I first started, I was paid. Uh, I, I did a long night. I'm like, I'm just going to come in. I'll just come in and at six and play till whenever. So I get in at six, I play like six off, off and on, six p.m. to one a.m. for 50 bucks. <laughs> Why not? Why not? I'm learning. And I would learn all, and I'd learn all these songs, and we'd do this thing, I'd put all the fake books out, and people would, they'd pick a song they want me to try, and they'd put the dollar in the book, and so it, it was good for a while, you know, and uh, and I, as I went on, I created binders, I had a Broadway binder, and a, you know, just songs that I knew that the crowd liked. I had an Elton John, by, you know, Elton John, Billy Joel binder, all this stuff. And I'd, every week I'd walk in with my laundry basket full of fake books and binders and my little sound system I'd set up and I would do it. And at one point I was doing Mondays and Tuesdays there. Um, sometime, most of the time for three or four people, three or four faithful people that came every week. Once in a while Michael Curtis would come in and he'd, he'd, sing, he'd sing a song. Uh, He'd that, sing. Oh yeah. Have you, oh, oh you heard Michael? Never. Oh my god, you gotta hear Michael. Really? And I'm not just saying that so he doesn't like send me he doesn't ask me to get up as long. But <laughs> no, Michael has an incredible voice. And um so uh so sometimes Michael would come in and you know and, you know, others would come in here or there. So I did that for a while. Well then there was a, a gentleman um from Manchester that ended up buying a bar in Agunquit called Inside Out. It was a bar that was there. He bought he was running he bought it off the owner, he was running the business. And he had heard from uh, DJ Brian O'Connor, thank you, Brian, because you led me to continue with this. He says, well, Rob Dion's doing piano bar now. You should have him come up and play. So that following summer, after being at the Breezeway for a couple of years, um, he, uh, John says, will you come and play like happy hour, 5.30 to 8.30, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, one summer, 2007, uh, or, uh, around that time, say six or seven. I said, sure. So I'd come up again. I'd move all my th big thing of books my sound system, all this stuff, up the stairs, and I'd sit in the little bar area, which is still it's still there. It's a taco restaurant now. Mm -hmm. So every time I go there, I'm like, I played right there one summer. And I would sit there, and I would play whatever, and people would just do with background music. I'd play and sing, and the owner would say, turn up, and the chef would say, you're too loud. And it was, you know... Um, so that summer, towards the end of the summer, there was these two guys that I had met that was a... Um, two husbands, that one was a singer, one was a piano player, and they were playing down the street at Admiral's and Lounge. And they were doing Fridays and Saturdays. So when I was done at 8.30, I'd zip down there to hear them. Oh. So at the end of that summer, they said, hey, next summer they want us to come back. We don't, we don't want to do both nights. Would you do Fridays and we'll do Saturdays? The owner said that was fine. So that next summer, I moved to, and, the, and by then, inside out, that they, were, they had closed. Not mm. because of me. Mm. Uh, 
Now we can Breadcrumbs. Follow the breadcrumbs. <laughs> Gets better. So I go to Admiral's Lounge for a summer, and I play uh, every Friday for that whole summer. And uh, they ended up selling the business a couple years later. Hmm. Not because of me. Breadcrumbs. Um, i just been around forever. I can't help it. Um, and so what ends up happening is that towards the end of that summer, one night, uh, the guy who was booking the people at the front porch where I am now and the guy who was doing the scheduling and a couple other people were at a show at the Gunko Playhouse, which is right up the street. It's, this is all on Route 1, that busy Route 1. They were walking back and they said, hey, there's a piano bar here. We should stop in. So, uh, so all of a sudden I'm playing. And again, you know, I got some faithful people at Admirals, but it wasn't a huge crowd. A lot of people that were staying there. Um, and so they walked in. And I'm like, oh, oh the red porch piano player like three of the piano players are here so i'm doing it, i'm doing it so i finished my shift and uh, i want to i want to say it was jeffrey mitchell who still plays at the porch he's he's retired from playing but he plays show tunes twice a month and he says why are you here why don't you play at the porch and i'm like well i've never been invited so anyway so he talked to the current the owner at the time wayne westcott and i was supposed to be at admirals this was like right before labor day and I was supposed to be there until Columbus Day, and they hired me, and they said, we want you to start Labor Day night. So um, so I told the Admiral's owners, and they got it. They're like, nope, Ken and Jason were like, nope, we get it. It's, it's a good opportunity, all this stuff. So I started playing at the porch. And now uh, I think I'm starting my 12th, 12th year in September wow. at the front porch. It's 11 or 12 years. It's such a blur as far as the years. Well, you're getting old now, too. Well, so you know, I'm getting older. Years. I don't remember things as well, right. you know. Uh, but so, yeah, so I've been there and, and over the years with the porch. So Wayne Ross got owned the business for many, many of those years. And then three years ago, three or four years ago, we have a brand new owner uh, named uh, Scott Vogel, who's a great guy who's bringing, uh, he's brought some new life and some new ideas into the business, uh, which is great. And so we, I've just continued being there. And I've learned over the years, I've gotten really good at knowing what crowds want. Oh, you like that song? You're going to like that. And I've gotten much more confident about it. So now, whereas something that would rattle me six years ago, I'd be like, uh, uh, um, doesn't anymore. I take it. I take the punch and I roll with it. Uh, and that's really helped me be very successful. So that ends up being, you know, I end up doing that quite a bit as well. I think, um, I think last year I did a total of like two hundred and something cabaret nights. Or what something in the year? What? Yeah. On top of, On everything, top of everything else. Everything else. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> two hundred. So, yeah, so it was so it was very very busy. So, but the good thing that's helped also is that, you know, I have people that come back every year and they may be on vacation. They're like, oh, we we we, we fix our vacation so we can see you, and it's really really oh, nice. It's been it's a really good community, and um, and it's and so I find it a lot of fun because again, it's the challenge of like if someone says, hey, do you have this song? You know, if the if I'm feeling good about the crowd. I'll say, no, I don't know, but let's download it. Let's do it. And I'll just do it. You know, and it might not be perfect the first couple of times, but some of the greatest songs I have are things that people said, hey, how about this song? And I learned, I'm going, wow, people really like this. I'm going to really learn this. And the good thing about that now is it's no longer the, bi the I was gonna ask laundry you basket. It. It's all iPad. Oh. So I have like thousands and thousands of songs in the iPad. So, and the other good thing is that I can, if someone asks, if you ask me for a song I don't have, but like I'm kind of familiar with it, I either have it in one of the fake books in the Kindle, which is an awful, awful app, or I can just go online and just... There goes my Amazon yeah. sponsorship. I'm sorry, I'm down sorry. Down the tubes. Uh, but I can also just download the sheet music and just do it. And that's what makes it, you know... It, I always say, if someone asks for a song I don't have, I'll never... Someone, next time they ask for it, I'm going to have it. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. going to make sure I have it. So what do you um, find people are... What kind of... I, I, I don't ever go to bars so, anymore. So, um, what... What kind of music are you playing? Are you, it, so, it all, so a lot with the front porch. Like all show tunes. Yeah, so the like front 60s, porch. So the thing is, is the it? front porch has like been around forever and ever and ever. It's like one of the oldest piano bars around, and um, it's uh, so if you play early, it depends on the crowd. You play to the crowd. If you play early, it's typically like on Fridays. I do um, five to nine on Fridays, and I'll play like all the old standards. Um, you know the crooners show tunes and then the last hour that i might go into like some 60s some elton john billy joel some um dance style music i have a drum machine that i use uh for the dance style stuff and i do that because when the person comes on at nine then it's like they can hit the ground running um 
And so that's the whole idea is giving them a good room. If I'm playing late, uh, it can be everything from um, 60s to Lady Gaga to Billy Joel to uh, It's Raining Men to... So are people singing um, along with you? Oh, yeah. Or it's all they sing-along bass. It's they all sing-along bass. Oh. Yeah. So it's not just you playing. You're not just... Yeah, Billy so Joel I'm playing and singing, thing, and you know? they're all singing along with it. Uh, and that's the whole thing is getting, is the challenge of picking songs that people are going to want to sing with you, then also that they know the words to, because we're so karaoke-based now that mm. people expect the words are going to be on the screen behind. We can't do that because of copyright things. So it's very much like, on okay, what songs do you know? My show tune Fridays is a lot of people that are there, that are there, have been there every week forever and ever and ever. They'll know every word to every song. It's wow. amazing. Um... And then now uh, we were given the challenge at the beginning of this summer by the owner to start playing. Um, I'll use the he used the word younger music, and I get that because and I and when he first said that I was I was kind of scared. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm not sure I can do this. So and he's I'm, transitioning. He's I'm, figuring there's a younger yeah, audience, and I'm going like, to okay, I can do that '60s stuff, the the Beatles, the Monkees, the Journey, the you know all the mm -hmm. '70s, '80s. Can I do the younger stuff? Having the drum machine has helped, um, but I, but again, I took it as a challenge. I'm like, all right, now I'm not going to let this, you know, I'm not going to let this lick me. I'm gonna I'm gonna learn some newer stuff. Is this so I learned this some, where the beep comes in. Was that Justin Bieber? Is that I do have a Justin couple what? of Justin Bieber songs. Uh, I do them as a joke. I have Britney Spears. I do it as a joke because nobody wants to see Rob Dion sit behind the piano and play Britney Spears. Uh, but you know, I'll still do like Cher, Madonna, all the uh, Pink. Uh, all those new hip. There's always some new that's hip. Mm -hmm. uh, the song of the summer this year is "Shallow" from "A Star Is Born." It's one of the mo it's one of the Lady Gaga yeah, songs it. from that, okay. and that's the big song that's driving everybody nuts because the staff nuts because they hear it like forever and ever oh. and ever. Um, and so, uh, so I've people learned, singing it with you. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And the, but you know the good thing about that is it allowed me to bring back some of the other Lady Gaga I have, like "Bad Romance," "Edge of the Edge of Glory," all those songs that are just. High, and, and what I do on the late nights is I do a high energy piano bar. So it's like, you know, the songs are like bing, 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 bing. So it's like because a medley? It's a medley because you realize is that what happens is that if you give people a chance to draw their attention away, that's when misbehaving starts happening. And that's when you lose the crowd. And once you lose the crowd, it's mm -hmm. like you're, it takes a lot to get them back. So I try to do like a high energy, just like. Yeah, and, and it's, but the good thing is that people are still wanting, they still want to sing Lion Sleeps Tonight. You know what I mean? They still yeah. want to sing, you know, Deo, American Pie, um, That's you know, Queen. Funny. You get a lot of the same stuff, which is good. And then once in a while, I'll throw in some, like, like one night someone wanted a Pitbull song. And I was like, Pitbull? And, I, and the funny thing is what I do sometimes is if I'm out and I hear a song that I'm like, That's a kind of cool song. I could do that. I'll go on my phone. I'll put it in the queue to download. And then I'll download it, and then I'll forget about it. So I typed in Pitbull, and I forget what song I had, but I was like, oh, I can play this. Did the song, tremendously successful. People all sang along. But what the owner's trying to do, and I respect that immensely, because so many piano bars in this, everywhere, are in that mode of like, this is what we do. We do this. We've done this for 40 years. This is what we do. And the crowds just don't come anymore. There's a perfect example. There's a uh, piano bar in uh, Fort Lauderdale called Club Silver. It was. It opened right when I was there in December, and their whole thing was they had that happy hour. The crooner guy who was very good singing and but and I said, oh, I said, you know, I never want to bump anybody, but if you have open slots, I'm here. I'd love to play. Oh no, we're done by like nine. Well, no offense, but the older guys that come in and have two iced teas aren't going to help you support your business for the thing. So what this owner's done is he said, okay, he's a younger guy too. He's in his late twenties. He's in his Seriously? late twenties. Yeah, he's done a lot, and he's in his late twenties. He has a lot of people that are supporting him, uh, a lot of investors in the business and stuff like that, which helps. I don't know the whole inner workings of that, so I'm not promising to know. I know the inner workings of that, but um, but he said, you know what? And he's told himself, he's like, look, if I'm going to grow this and keep it alive, we've got to do this. We got to cater to that. And but there's challenges with that because sometimes you might have a room full of people my age that are just as happy singing the Beatles or whatever yeah. and people on the other side that are younger that want to hear the Lady Gaga and mm. stuff like that so what I end up trying to do is I try to just ping both back and forth between things um, but people just want to they want to be entertained and that's the other thing too at Piano Bars is that years ago 
you, with, especially even the front porch, the older piano players, they sat there and they just played. They never sang a note. They were background, right, pretty much? Well, they just sang a note, and the crowd knew all the lyrics, and they would sing all the tunes. Well, now, people don't want that anymore. People want to be entertained. So if, you, if, you're, not, if you're just sitting there playing, people, it's not, they're not, they want to be engaged. Mm -hmm. So I find as long as you're engaging people, even if it's a song that they might not know too well, and I have a good rapport, I'm joking with people, and you know, and um, I do silly little things, like if someone gets up to go to the bathroom and they come back, I'll, I'll stop playing and go, did you wash your hands? Yeah, okay, and I'll keep going. You know, just silly little, stupid little things like that, that people just make people chuckle, yeah. and gives them a good time, then it works. And so that's, that's been the challenge. So it's good that that's so successful, and I make really good money doing that, but my issue is, I love what I do, I have to do less of it. Yeah. As I get older, I'm just like, I just want more time. So 200 kinda, nights a, a year? Know, just do my thing, plus the theater stuff and the, you know, and so it's, um, so yeah, so it's a little bit, a little less stuff. So this is the nice. porch in yeah. where? Uh, the front porch, uh, piano bar and restaurant in Agunquit, Maine. And how are you there uh, now? What's I'm your... there three nights a week right now. You are? Yeah, Thursday, Fridays, and Sundays for another couple of weeks. And then as, a, as we get into the winter, we cut less nights. We go to like Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, so I'll just be two nights, uh, which is doable. So, so the good thing is in the winter it gets a little bit less, you know. Yeah. Um, is that a big drive for you? It's about an hour and fifteen. I have a place in Agunquid as well. Oh, okay. So that helps. Yeah. That helps. So I, I don't get to spend much time there, but it's a place where if I get out and I'm just tired, I can just crash there. Yeah, so it's good. Yeah, you know, it's, that is good. That is good, man. But yeah, so it's and it's a great place. It's you know it's, it's everyone's happy place is what they call it, yeah. and it's um. I'm thrilled that I'm there, you know, and I said, I'll be there, I'll, I'll be there as long as I'm still relevant, and then when the day that I realize I'm just, it's gotten beyond me, then I will, but I'll tell you, I'm going to go down fighting, because I want to, like, I'll, I'll learn that new stuff. Yeah, good for you. You know, just because it's something different, it's just a challenge, yeah. you know, it's, uh, nothing's easy just to, you know, just throw in the towel, like, oh, well, you know. Yeah. Um, and I also direct some, some choirs, too. What? <laughs> Are you kidding Not me? Not many people know that. Um... <laughs> Folks, this is why I'm single. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so tell so us yeah, about so that. So I direct so choirs, is that, and I, I, just I'll give you the quick version of that. So um, I direct a, a community choir called the Volunteers in Manchester. It's, um, it's we're up to like I think 46 members. It's out of the uh, it's uh, Elliott Hospital Associates, which is the uh, one of the benefactor volunteer groups of the Elliott Hospital has had this group for like 30, 40 years at this point, really? called the Volunteers. And it's a group of um, some older, some retired, and some uh, old adults that are working still. Uh, we rehearse every week, and we go to two assisted living nursing homes a month singing a program. Uh, so because I do that, and I've done a church choir forever and ever and ever and ever, obviously, because that's what musicians oh, do. Oh, my God, man. So in doing that, I also got um, hired to do a, uh, and it's more of a music therapy thing, uh, two assisted livings on Wednesdays and Thursday mornings. So I go there for an hour. And again, it's a little chorus. We're singing the music of Rogers and Hammerstein right now. And that's just, it's more like a music therapy thing, little chorus thing that I do. Um, but yeah, so it's its a lot. Do you teach music too? I do have, I have less students though. I have less students now. I cut back. Because I was teaching with the, with the music school uh, for a while, but I, I realized this fall I had to cut back. So I cut back to like 10 students. Man. So it's not too bad. But it's, um, there's a lot going on, you know? And, it's, and I manage it because it's, it, it, I maintain the same schedule like, you know, like on Tuesday mornings, I have the volunteers. On Wednesday mornings, I've got yeah. London Dare. On what Thursdays, I've got, and then I can go to Majestic, you know, midday and work until whenever and get work done. Um, but it's, you know, and but the good thing too, what uh, you know, what what allows me to do all that stuff too is that, and I always say this is that I have the greatest people working for me at Majestic. Uh, I can, I have good directors that I hire, good teams of people. My Karen, my development director, is great. So it's one of those things where they can. I can manage and not have to physically be. My job is not supposed to be physically there all the time. Yeah. But I can manage and I can go on vacation and take stuff with me and just check in and all that. So it's uh, it's good. But so I do a lot of things. I just you like I said, busy, I just I just have to do less of less of Ooh. what I'm doing. But what do you what do you cut? You know, it's like it's like oh I'm gonna cut the the Wednesday morning senior. Well, you'll figure out something. And that's if like you the highlight. Like heart attack. Well, and that's like that. Well, and that's why I'm on a diet actually. Um, I just started though. I was so, gonna bring you know, that up. But I didn't oh, did you know see it on Facebook? I did. Um, yes, I finally decided that I. Uh, um, yeah. So, but who do you who do you disappoint? But there'll come a time where I'm gonna have to say. 
Uh, like, for instance, the, the company that I work for on the Wednesday and Thursday mornings is an independent contractor doing the course. They just opened a new facility in Kingston, and they've already approached me about that. And I said, I don't have another morning to give you. Because my thing is, I don't want to give the, oh, I'll go there on Monday or Friday mornings. And then it's the middle of summer, and I'm like, oh. So luckily, I have my Mondays and Fridays. Well, how's your health? You know, I, mean, I have it, good health. It, okay, so I have good health. It's not like my biggest thing with going on the diet was just, uh, you know, because of my schedule so bad. I just I've gotten really extremely laxed of what I'm eating and okay. what I'm, you know, and I had to. Uh, I just pub food, a lot of pub, a lot of pub food, a lot of fast food, uh, a lot of. Oh, I'm just going to get another Domino's pizza because it's right around the corner. Um, but so what? It, what happened was this is kind of. I was going to Florida. And you always have to make sure your suitcases aren't too heavy, right? Mm -hmm. So the easiest way to do that is you get on the scale, you weigh yourself, and then you get on the scale again and weigh yourself, hold the suitcase, and you know if it's over or not. I hope other people do this, because I've said this to a few people, and they kind of like laugh at me. Um, so I so I get my suitcases ready for Florida, and I stepped on the scale, and I looked down, and I went, that can't be right. That can't. So I get off, and I get back on. I'm like, 236 pounds, folks. 230. I'm like... This, I'm like, okay, that's way too many pizzas. So I said, okay, I'm going to get through vacation. And that's without your luggage. You that's, didn't yeah. have any... I didn't have my luggage in my hand. <laughs> so, so I was Dang, like, you this know coat what? is heavy. Yeah. So I was <laughs> like, you know, like, I'm down. You're like ripping my toenails off, my fingernails off. So I said, you know what? It's time. It's just to, to feel better. Because, you know, you get to the point where I was like feeling like, oh, it's like, oh. you know, you got to put your shoes on in the morning. You're like, oh. Yeah. And I just, I said, you know, it's time to just, and I did South Beach Diet many, many years ago, very successfully, and then I just, I just let it get away from me again, so I said, I'm going to make, and I'm hardcore, I've been like, okay, very hardcore about, and I just started, but I'm really committed, again, challenged to mm -hmm. making it happen, so we'll see what happens in three so weeks. So you're sticking so. with South Beach, or have you yeah, done, I'm like, paleo, with, keto? No, and, there's so many different ones. I, I, I looked at, like, the keto, and I looked at... What's that new app, Noom or something? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was just it like, you know what? Noom. I have to just do something that's going to be easy. Tell me what I can and can't eat easy. Because I'm not going to gorge myself. I'm not going to gorge myself on lettuce. Yeah. I'm just not, you know? So it's so at least with South Beach, they, they spell it out very clearly of like, this is what you can you can't eat. So that's been very, very helpful. And it's actually, it just means planning ahead. Mm -hmm. You know, like, okay, what am I going to eat today? When am I going to eat stuff like that? And then it's, and I know I'll lose, I'm, I've already, I'm already losing weight every day. So it's. Do you buy their food or do you just. No, 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 no. I just, just I use their just, diet. I just formula. use, and I found an app that, did, I'm not even using the app, but it told me phase one, this is what you can and can't eat. Mm -hmm. Um, so have you gotten rid of just like started with mostly, like no mostly sugar, sugar no and carbs. flour, no sugars and yeah, carbs and yeah. yeah stuff like that. So you know, and it's totally manageable. I mean, you know, it's I'm sure I'm gonna get sick of it, but um, like I said, I'm dedicated enough to like it. Just, it just has to happen. Just only because I do keep a fast pace and my health is good. Mm. So why do this? You know, why be like this for another ten years and then oh, I start having all these health problems and then. You know, it's just not worth it. Yeah. So, so it's time to just back it up. So yeah, yeah so I didn't, but I didn't do the whole, you know, you know, half naked picture on Facebook. I just thank I you. Couldn't, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna put the number once a week, but I'm not. You're not. And I took, I did take a picture, a fully closed picture, bef at, uh, thank you. when I first started. You know, I don't want to go into Facebook jail because I, you know, <laughs> showing too much nip or something. <laughs> 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 Okay, on but that. you know it's hard because, like you said, I mean, I'm always on the road. I'm always like fast food, or you know, it's terrible. It, it's, uh, well, and you probably don't move much either if you're on the road. A lot. you're sitting down to yeah. play. You're sitting down to do most of what you have to do. It's not like you're out running. Yeah, you know, yeah. jeez. So it's uh, so so it'll be good. You know, it's uh, thanks for not bringing that up though. I was like, I wasn't gonna bring that up. I'll bring it up. I don't care. I'm fat, <laughs> and it's okay. I know the feeling. <laughs> I know the feeling. Well, I was up to two thirty, two thirty something. Yeah. At one point, I, I've lost. I'm down to like one ninety three. Yeah. But a lot of it's just uh, again. It's just eating habits, yeah. you know. And that's the eat thing. Eat a little too, less, you know? Jesus. And, and, that, and that's what it is. Honestly, eat a little less. Seriously, you know that it's awful. It's like I have a Domino's around the corner, and I'm not sponsoring Domino's because they have their own but issues. They, but they feel free to sponsor but me. You can sponsor Ratio yeah. if you want. I'm, I'm, I'll uh, send take a it. check. Yeah. Um, but you know, you'll always. I found out it's really easy just to order a Cario pizza for nine bucks and take huh. it home. Well, yeah. Then you eat a whole damn large pizza by yourself, pizza by and yourself, beer, and I'm I like, know. I just can't do it. I know. So. Um, so the last time I did that was the day before the diet. I'm like, it's gonna be a pizza and beer night, pizza and beer night. It's hmm. gonna be a while. Did I? Um, where's my? I have to check my email. Did I get an invitation to that? Party? No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you didn't. What? I ate oh. all the pizza, <laughs> and I actually got one, and I got one beer in and fell asleep. So. Oh, you are old. I am old. Yeah, I've been. Yeah. Dang, dang. So, 
But no, it's just a matter of just changing routine. And I'll be honest, I've only been on the diet for a couple days, but my eating has been so much better. And mm-hmm. I, but you know, I I actually feel better already just yeah. by like you know just because I'm not putting all this junk in my. Yeah. So it'll be good, you know. So but if I could get down to like you know below 200, I'd be happy. Yeah. I don't have to be. I know I'm not looking good, to be right. skinny when I'm you know when I like I wasn't when I was. I always say I was skinny once. I was 14. Yeah, but I was birth. skinny once, you know. You know, I, people see pictures of like, you like in high school. They're like, "Oh my god, like, that was you." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." That was now the two of those is me. My now. twin brother, I killed him. Yeah. <laughs> so well, that's good. All right, so let's talk about the daddios. Oh, the daddios! I, I love. I'm. I have never. I haven't seen them yet at uh, Mohegan Suns. Uh, so no word. So um, I can tell you, we just got booked again for Mohegan Sun. Damn you! Uh, I'm February. glad. I'm so in glad. February. Really? Yes, good. it's, it's in February. Either. Uh, I, I I believe the date's going to be February 19th, but it, they change it sometimes. Because okay. originally they gave us January, then they moved it to February. Uh, but yeah, so the daddy always. Yeah. Oh. So it's, tell me how, I, 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 so I know, you know Jim, okay. and I've seen the daddios. Um, so you've seen them as a quartet without the band? Correct. Okay. It was all a cappella. Yep. So how did you get involved? Tell me about, Are you? do you love going to Mohegan Sun? I mean, you have to. I mean, I would think it's just... You're playing to what hundreds of people, yeah. And the whole ambiance of uh, I had Jim in here a little while ago, mm-hmm. and I talked to him about that too. Because I'm just this is like a an actor's dream, you know, to, to go from nothing to something. I mean, the Mohegan Sun, as far as I'm concerned, is yeah, a big upgrade, yeah, definitely. Know? I mean, I know it's not playing Fenway Park, but right. you know, so tell me about how, how so, you got involved. Um, in so, I know three of the guys. I knew uh, I originally knew Jim, Angelo, and Bo, and I knew them because when I did shows up in Concord with Irene Deshane, yep, if you remember Irene, yes, yes. Um, I met them doing shows with Irene Deshane. Uh, God rest Irene Deshane. Right. We, we, we keep saying, Well, we wish she was still here doing shows. And it was one of those, you know, we'd go and we'd rehearse and we'd go to margaritas every night after. And it was just such a great group of people to do shows with. So I met the three of them. And they and at the at one time the daddy was just the three of them. Oh, I didn't know. That. Uh, and then years later they brought in um, Drew Seneca, who was the one who looks like Colonel Sanders. I hope he hears this. Uh, and they brought him in as another guitarist, and, and they became the quartet. And they and as you know, they perform everywhere. I mean, right. they, every weekend yeah. they're somewhere. Literally everywhere uh, as yeah. a quartet. So what happened was that they were trying to get booked somewhere else. And there was one summer, I think they did Steel Hill Resort for a summer. Uh, up in Sam Borden, and Keith Belanger played for them. Um, and then years later, they, they said they really want to, uh, I guess the way I understand it is, they really wanted to be at the casinos, but they said, we're not going to book you unless you have a band. So they put a band together. So they called, I, I believe they had reached out to Keith, he couldn't do it, so they reached out to me, and I said, yeah, yeah I'm you're not, not doing, doing anything. anything. <laughs> so I said, sure, I, I, I'm sure I can squirrel that away. So I started going up and rehearsing. Originally, it was uh, me, Wit, and Rick Page, uh, keyboard, guitar, and bass, uh, uh, keyboard, bass, and drums. And we did our first gig at Mohegan Sun, and it was it was that was the goal. We were doing it for that, and uh, it was uh, an unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable experience, you know. And I liked for me again, it was a challenge because I've never really played in a band mm-hmm. as, as a keyboard player. Um, the challenge for me was it was something different than everything else I was doing. It was manageable because they were booking us dates way far in advance. And we were also rehearsing just a couple times and making it happen. So it wasn't too bad. Um, and then from that, we started getting more gigs with the band. So now we're up to maybe maybe half a dozen gigs a year. So it's not like... Tremendous. I mean, they're like they're like several dozen gigs a year with the four of them. I know. But with the band, we have we have about half a dozen gigs a year. So we started doing Mohegan Sun. We were doing it every six months, uh, pretty much. They were booking us, and the good thing I like about that again because it was like, oh, okay, it meant clearing my schedule for a couple of days, but mini vacation, mm. right? So what I would do is I would go to Mohegan Sun, and then I would I would swing back through Providence, Rhode Island, to see friends on the way through. So I'll stay a couple of nights in Mohegan. Then spend a couple in Providence, come home. So it was a, it was a, it was an opportunity for me to do something that was fun, while at the same time too, you know, having adding a little mini getaway as well to it, like you know what we're adjudicating. Um, so over the years, we we had a new drummer, we had a new bass player. We're in the process of, re, of going through, a, we're actually looking for a new drummer and a new bass player, um, which is interesting. And it's not been all. I mean, there's been times where I've like. Um, 
Yeah, anytime you, you get anybody, it's like a theater show. When you get people that work together that closely, there's bound to be some of this. Mm. You know, and the daddios, they do a great job. But there's times where they're they're like this with each other a little bit. And it's all, in it, but they all have the same goal of it, making the best they can. So it's like it all, and nobody like leaves mad. There was a couple of rehearsals where I was just like, all right, I'm not sure I want to do this anymore. Because it just got very tense and... Um, well, it's like family fighting. Well, that's right? what it was, and so and so it was funny because I remember Angela said he's like, you didn't look. I said, yeah. I said, I, I have to admit, I was ready to kind of just. Uh, so now the joke is, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, well, you know, I'm the I'm the last original band member, so I should I should get a silver jacket too. Uh, that's <laughs> right. Joking with them, but um, but I never. I'll be honest. I it was a lot of fun, but it is it is work. And and the other issue too that we have is that when they sing as a quartet, they do cert, they do uh, songs. They do a certain format of the songs. But with the band, it changes sometimes. Oh. So we have to be flexible enough to be like, oh, they're adding a chorus. Okay, we gotta. So that's what makes it a little bit different. In that, so a lot of times we spend our time saying, what was the format of this song? And I've tried to you know streamline things and write. A lot, I write down a lot of things. So that gets a little frustrating sometimes. But overall, it's really fun. They're a great group of guys. They're great to play with um, and for. Uh, if you had asked me if I was going to be the last band member standing, I would have told you no, because I figured it was just going to be a couple times. Um, but it's fun. You know, it, it's definitely fun. And I'm glad we didn't, they didn't book us for Mohegan Sun this last fall. That was the first... We've done it for like three years. So that was like the first fall we didn't get booked. And there's lots of speculation as to why. So recently, a couple weeks ago, they did call and we're, we're booked for February, which is great to yeah. be back there. Um, I will be honest there, Mohegan Sun is... Um, I feel they're feeling the pain of that new casino in Boston. So they're not as generous with the band members as they were. And the, the four guys still get mm -hmm. the carte blanche package and all that. But um, they're not as generous with the band members, which is, you know, eh, but, uh, but it's, still an, it's, still, uh, it's still very much worth doing. It's still a fun time. Mm -hmm. and, and if I look at, you know, like, like I said, I go to Providence after. So really what I'm making on the gig, if I added it up, is I'm paying a lot more than I'm... Um, but at the same time, too, you get the two week, two nights at Mohegan Sun that they give you, and um, you know, it's just it's just fun. So tell me you about know, tell me about the experience of. So I have this in my image: You're coming out the concourse, the lights are all going, there's people out there cheering on as you're coming out. Is it that you you yeah, get you that? Know, I mean, it, um, have you have you? Because nobody does that in theater. Been, Nobody's no. cheering you as you the curtains no, are opening. No, no. Um, have you been to Wolfstent and Mohegan Sun? Mm -mm. Okay. So Wolfstent's kind of like their smaller lounge in the center of like all the machines around it. It's a smaller venue, but it's still that feeling of just like you're basically just filling the whole casino with this music. And it's a great feeling um, in that you, you know, you get there god early to do a sound check. And then you're kind of just hanging down the green room. And on the green room walls, it's like any other music venue. There's all these signatures of all the people that have appeared there. Yeah. All these people. And you're like, you know, and I couldn't even name a couple. I couldn't even name some of them. But it's all names. That, oh, I know. Oh, all these people you know. And you're like, oh, my God. I'm on the same stage as so-and-so was. And so, and then you go out. And it's it's nervous. I have to admit, I don't get nervous very often. But I get, I'm a little in tune with... Like, I'm very focused on what I'm doing because the other issue, too, is that, you know, the arrangements they do of the songs don't always match the sheet music. And I'm a sheet music person. At least give me a chord sheet or something. So I have to mark up the music, and I have to sometimes it's like, oh, I can't get your song and the key you're doing it in, so i got to transpose the keyboard down. And, you know, so it's mm -hmm. one of those things where it's a little nerve-wracking, but, but the good thing is I was telling the guys, because they did the show at Majestic last August that was one of the best things we've done and the audience members were like when are you having a begin when are you having and even the guys were like god you have the best audiences because they were in tune they were singing along they were so we're going to book them again for may of next year but it's getting to and i said to the guys after i said you know i said for the songs that we've been do, we've done now for a while i'm feeling better about just knowing how they go so i can not call it in but be a little more into it mm -hmm. um but it's still fun, you know, and it's like, it's just something different, you know, yeah. it's different than everything else that I do, and they keep it pretty low commitment, like typically we'll rehearse two or three times before a gig. Um, uh, the Majestic gig, we had the Majestic gig, then we had a gig up at Laconia, Ro uh, Rotary Park up in Laconia right after that. So we rehearsed for those, this is a song set for those two gigs. Um, 
it'll be a little bit of a challenge in January because we're going to have a new drummer again and a new bass player, uh, and that's that's tough, mm -hmm. you know, because um, there, you know, the keyboard's great, but it's the drums really that's helping keep everything going. So, and I know they'll find they'll find good people, and we'll be, you know, when we lost the original uh, bass player and the original drummer, I was like, oh crap. But you know, we got two people that were equally, you know, good. Yeah. So I think that you know, it's just a matter of just finding those people and, uh, and all that. So but, how many know, shows do you do at Mohegan on a? Typical it's only it's a it's a two saw it's a, it's one show it's a two set show. That's it. Yep. So it's like so they so yeah so it's oh so yeah so when we go there it's like uh, it used to be a Monday which was actually better than now now it's a Wednesday. They have a thing called Forever Young, and I guess it's something that they do every single week. At that for that day, uh, they have specials for you know people over a certain age and the ARP, all that stuff. But um, so it used to be a Monday, which was perfect because you could make a weekend of it. But now it's a oh. Wednesday, so it's a little bit more difficult. Which is one reason why the original drummer had a little bit of an issue with it because it's like it's hard for me to just leave for like two days midweek. Right. Um, but um, but yeah, so we typically do a show where we do it's usually a noon show. We do a forty-five minute set break, forty-five minute set. But the hot so you're like out by like four in the afternoon. You're and done. Rest of the day, yeah. Rest of the day to just hang out at the resort and do your thing and wow. yeah. Gamble away the money you just. Uh, made. You know, I don't gamble. I, I, not because I'm like morally superior or anything. But you give yours to uh, Domino's. I, yeah, I give mine to Domino's. Uh, <laughs> but no, I don't. I do. I don't. So for me, it's just for me. What what kills me at Mohegan Sun, honestly, in this more great restaurants that you can eat at. And Krispy Kremes, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna have to like rain this in before February. Yeah. Um, but what does it for me is, is there's a pub there that has like you know 35 beers on tap, and so it's like, oh, and how many of those are IPAs? Oh, 20. And I'm like, oh, so, so that's why I was they always joke with me because I have to really regulate the night before. Like we get there on like a Tuesday night, mm -hmm. we have sound check at like 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. the next morning, and I'm like, the the first couple of gigs I was like, oh. Oh, you know why? Why am I doing this? Why you I, rockers why are do crazy. I, and that's what I felt like—the rocker that <laughs> partied all night. And then, so I learned to regulate after that. Uh, but it's uh, but it's good. On the second night, all bets are off. So now you get up the next day and you're like, "Where's my walker?" Yeah, where's my walker? <laughs> so, well, and that's the other thing too is that they provide uh, Mohegan provides all the equipment. Really? They provide all the back line, the keyboard, so the drums. Show up? Every, I just got to show up my what? iPad. I did start bringing a, a smaller keyboard because they have this Kurzweil keyboard that just doesn't have the, you know, it's doo -wop music, so it's a lot of like organ sounds mm -hmm. and vibraphone. And so I have this little Roland keyboard that's like 30 years old. Can't kill the thing, but it has all the sounds I use for the Daddios. So what I do is I use that and I double tier it. So I'm using the bottom keyboard for the piano and then using the upper keyboard first. So I bring that keyboard now. Mm -hmm. But uh, and I just started doing that only because I realized that without without the ability to do um, vibraphone on one song, electric piano on some, Rhodes on one song, organ on one song, different sounds, everything starts to sound the same because yeah. it's the same progression. Mm -hmm. So that's why I bring the other keyboard, it helps. But even that, it's small enough to just carry right in. But yeah, the drum set, everything they provide. Wow, so how long is each set? 45 minutes to the, to the, to the minute. Um, they're very strict there well, they about are. going over. You oh, know, really? Yeah. You want because they because what happens they want people to go and gamble the machine for the fifteen minutes in between. Gotcha. So you do the forty five minute set. People all they go gamble. They come back for the second set. Mm -hmm. So that's what it is. So they're very strict. So it's funny because when they played majestic, we were like, oh, I said, you have to worry about time on us. Just do your set. If it lasts, and I think the first set lasted like a little under an hour because they weren't. We were just a little more relaxed as far as. So is each set different or or are yeah. they the yeah yeah? So it's two different sets. So we have we probably have. 40, 40 or 50 songs that we do, uh, and each set has about probably, you know, 13 to 15 songs, depending on the song. Yeah. You know, and there's certain things, because the other thing, too, with the doo-wop songs is they're, they're really short. Mm. So a lot of times, like, okay, we're doing the extended version of this, adding a chorus, adding a... And it's like anything else. There's certain songs we play that I'm just like, oh, I'm going to act like I love this song, but I really don't like to play it. Uh, no different than the piano bar, no different than a theater show. I mean, there's shows Majestic produces, I'm like... It's a great show. I have no urge to want to direct it. Mm. I just don't. This is not my thing. Um, but and I have other people to do it. Audiences love it, right? So audiences love it. Yeah. So they, you know, and so we get, so I get someone who's a good fit for that show. 
But um, but yeah, no, it's fun. It's definitely fun. And Mohegan's great. You know, we did Mohegan. Uh, we've done a bunch of shows up in Laconia at different events because that's where they're based out of, and that's been a lot of fun. Um, a couple private parties, those have been fun. So it's, you know, but the thing is, is you know, well, obviously if they hire the four guys, it's cheaper than the whole band. Sure. So the whole band is usually the, the uh, when they're willing to pay a little more for the whole band. And, yeah. But it's fun, you know, and, and uh, like I said, known Jim and Angelo and Bo forever, and love working with them. You know, Drew and I sometimes, uh, I do, we do this a little bit sometimes. Um, but it's not, we never leave like, it is what it is. And even him and I, I'm finally, we're finally to, starting to get each other, you know, which is good. So, and it's funny because that's always a joke because he's, he's the one right in front of me, the daddy. Oh. And Jim keeps saying, we can just switch sides. You can be behind me. I'm like, yeah, I might be on. <laughs> Maybe it's time. But, but like, it's like anything else. You know, people are so passionate about what they're doing. Yeah. They're going to, they're going to ruffle. And it, it is what it is, you know. And I'm not saying I never get ruffled because I get ruffled, you know. It's, you know, well, you I've get got, tired sometimes, yeah, you, know, you know, you, you just, and there's, a, each individual person is a little bit different, and they have different beliefs, different structures, different yeah. things that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, even like as a director, I mean, that's, there's all these companies now, but it's hard to get directors to do big musicals now. Directors, especially the good, really good directors, they've done the big musicals. They don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. It's too much. It's just too much. So... So that's the hard thing is is finding directors for the big musicals, yeah. you know. Like with you know, I'm directing from a just like an adult show. Like I'm doing James right now, I'm directing the kids. I always do, and I'm doing Fiddler. So I'm doing a couple of the kids shows. That's easy. It's easy. The kids are great. You know, you parents are gonna love what you do no matter what it is. They're gonna love seeing their kid. Sure. Kids are gonna have a good experience. Uh, but with the adult shows now, I tend to direct. If I direct at Majestic, normally it's because I have a show that I don't have a director for. Um, and uh, but it's the smaller shows. You know, like last year I did uh, Plaza Suite. I directed Neil Simon's Plaza Suite, and it was like each act is like each scene. The three acts is like two or three people. Mm. It was perfect. Yeah, it was perfect. I had such a great time doing it. You know, and I did cast. You know, and, and it's easier to if you have that actor that gets a little emotional or this. It's easier to kind of bring it back down. Right. Like, we should have a music. I mean, remember Titanic? How many people? Well, we had? I was just like going to bring that people. up. Yes. So we did the one up in jeans and it was an ensemble. Yeah, because they play and rewrote it. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got some people, well, a lot of people, I didn't have to, but who were playing three roles. Yeah. See, what they did with that was they rewrote, a, a, usually it's funny because usually they expand the cast. Right. But this one they wrote, It's a, was it the ensemble version? Yes. It's the same exact show. It's right. Just, it's just written for... 12 actors? Yeah, or, yeah, just a um, handful. Well, a handful but yeah, so, but I want to do, uh, I definitely would do Titanic again, but I'm going to do, the, I'll do the full one when you I do would, it. would, huh? Yeah, I'll do the full Ooh, one again. Baby. Yeah, I definitely want to do it again. It's been a while. Well, you know, I have did it, and then that Conquered was like 2000 and... Mm, please don't. Seven or eight or something, yeah. I think. I don't have a date, I don't... No, it was before that, because it was before I started doing Piano Bar, so, so it was probably 2000 and like... Five or five or something, two thousand four, two thousand five. I have such vivid memories of it. Yeah, the doors down at the bottom where they're sliding in and out, and you're yep. pulling. Oh my god! Craig just, set, which was amazing. It was yeah, the doors open. I couldn't oh. believe the furnace. Then the, the ballrooms coming out. Yeah, the deck way up top. Brilliant, yeah. brilliant, brilliant. It's um, yeah, it, it's definitely one of my good memories of, and that was the last big show I did for Concord. Yeah, um, I think after that was in. When Jim did City of Angels, I did like a walk-on role. Uh, um, but other than that, I hadn't done anything in Congress since summers of fun. Yeah. It was nice to be back, you know. It's a nice camaraderie there. Yeah, I know. So I it's, know. you know, it's... funny, I go back every now and then. I forget what I just did. I didn't say just did that, but... And they're like, well, welcome. Because <laughs> nobody knew me. Yeah. <laughs> I had done like so many shows. I go well, back yeah, down and they're like, Sandy oh, was I'm so and so. Nice yeah. to meet you. Have you been here before? Let yeah. me show you around. I'm like, yeah, no, it's okay. Yeah, it's like, you know, with me, I mean, Jim knows that I've directed there in Alwyn. And, and as, far, as far as like, I, the good thing about Seems a Foot, too, is I got to work with a lot of people that I never got to work with on stage. Like Wally was in it. Wally Pino, he was in the he was in the cast, and he did lights for Titanic when we did it. Um, John Conlon, who's yeah, done a lot of stuff, John. and I've loved John's stuff on stage. He was in it. I got to work with him, so you know, I think so. That was a good thing too, as I felt like something's afoot. The players was some those those like me that had been around for a, a good amount of time. Those like Walling and John had been a long time, and then some of the new generation people. And it just really just made for... I, I was I was sad, I was sad when that show ended. Yeah. And I'm always like, there's another show. There's right. another show. 
I was so sad. I was like in withdrawal. I'm so sad that show was done because it was just fun people. Because the thing is, too, is bringing up the Irene shows. You know, they were good shows, but the, it was the fun people that made it worth it. I know. Who wants to do a show with a bunch of crap heads? Well, that's <laughs> about like about 1944, the you know, big band. Right, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, first, second, and third time. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't going to do the fourth one. Oh, man, I know. That, I was, know. that was the one that she had put it on Memorial Weekend, and I'm like, I'm a piano cabaret person. I am giving up, giving up my Memorial Weekend working right. up in the piano bar. Um, but, yeah. Boy, that was a. But that had a lot you of talent did the, in it. Because you did the New Thalian one, the ones at Notre Dame too, right? No. Oh, you did the Audi. Only, the Audi at, only at the Audi. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So. But yeah, that was like, oh God, shows. I know. I know. <sighs> they have so many shows over so many. Oh my God, they stretched us. So what's on the horizon? What's coming up? Are you morphing into anything? You cutting back anything? You got anything that well, you want to do or trying to do or? Would love you know, to do? I think that you know this season with Jess is going to be a te very That's telling crazy. season. Jeez, I think crazy. that uh, I can see us using the studio theater more. Yeah. Uh, maybe the opera house a little less um, after this year. Well, we'll see. You know, it's it's very much. We'll see what happens. Um, it's a heavy schedule. It is a heavy schedule, but you know, part of it's because the youth and teen programs have really grown. To where you know we're just bursting on that, um, and with the extra studio theater, we're trying to add those extra shows. But the good thing about like some of the shows we pick, like you know, for instance, Love Sick is a bunch of smaller scenes. It's a smaller cast. Uh, we can do stuff like that in that venue. So, so I think that this year it'll be a very telling year at the theater, trying to find out you know, and obviously getting excited for the thirtieth year and right. figuring out. What do we want to put? What do we want to bring back? We want to do this new uh, piano bar stuff. I, I still, you know, I have cut back on private gigs. I don't do half as many as I used to. Uh, I remember. Wait, used to, did you say private gigs? Yeah. So was, hang on. So you did not mention private. So, choir. <laughs> let's let's get choirs. <laughs> piano. My gigs, mother's gonna watch private. this. And she's gonna like agree with you. And be like, okay, you know. Um, so I used so. I used to do all these private gigs in the summer that was like every Saturday I was playing somewhere. And like this a wedding summer, or something you mean? Or just like just um, some of the condo communities and stuff barbecues. like that. Summer barbecues, stuff like that. And I've gotten better in that last past year I took like one. I didn't take any others. So I've cut back on that. So, But you know, even with the piano bar, it's like I love what I do, but I see myself cutting back a little bit on that moving forward. You know, just not playing as many nights. Mm -hmm. Still being very present, but you know... Uh, like right now, I do all the scheduling for the piano players. I coordinate them, put them into slots, and that's a kind for, of, you know, for the piano bar. For the piano bar, it's a little bit of a challenge. He schedules you know. too. Uh, so, so yeah. So I took that over from someone else, and it's funny because when I when I when that guy did it, I was kind of I was sometimes a pain in the ass, and uh, now I'm doing it. And he's like, "Member?" I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> yeah. You know, I said, "Do you want the job back?" He's like, "No." <laughs> Uh, so it's a bit of a challenge, but, you know, I can see myself cutting back a little bit in the piano bar, you know, and just, uh, I've gotten better, like, this, this year, we, in this winter, we're now, we're looking at the slots going, oh, it's kind of, we have to fill all this, and I was like, I am not going to play the Saturdays, so I just, I'm not going to do it, so I've so kind of gotten better. Friday I do the and Fridays, the and I'll do a third, occasional Thursday, so oh. I'll cut back. So, yeah, so I'll cut back on that some. The choirs, you know, the thing is, is as a musician, and it's no different as an actor, you don't want to say no to gigs because you never know what you're not going to get. When are you going to have that dry spell? And I actually, to a fault, I've kind of, well, I'll take that on just so that, you know, the choir volunteers it's a takes the trait, summer off. But, yeah. yeah, but you know, for instance, volunteers takes the summer off. That's my busy time at the piano bar. So it's manageable. The assisted living, there's going to come a point where budgetary or whatever, it's, it is what it is, you know, and it's, um, so, so yeah, so I can see myself, but I, I think if I were to, have one thing that I would love to just be able to stop and just smell the roses and do would be like I said with that musical that I knew over the day that I had written back in we produced it in 92 and just I have the script and I'm just like oh I just gotta like go through it again and make set it, it on the kitchen table and make so it more mature can, yeah. just 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 elevate it you know just uh, you know because it's music the whole thing's music straight beginning to end and just all music you wrote all music yep that you wrote yep yeah. It's a uh, full-length show. All in and I just, it's just a matter of just going through and going. Yeah, I'm just gonna do this. So, so that'll be nice. But and then between everything else, you know, I always. But I, and also too, if I ever become not single again, hmm, available, gay. No, he's uh, not available. Uh, but There's no, no time. No, but no, I have said. I always, always said. I said, you know, I said someday when I get a boyfriend or a husband again. I never had a husband, not my own anyway. Um, but. It, <laughs> 
<laughs> we just went PG-13. Yes, we did. Um, but if I always say that if I were to meet somebody, because I made the mistake in my early 20s of not prioritizing that, I said that's when it's going to be bad for everything that I do. Because that's when it's going to be time to say, okay, I'm mm -hmm. not going to be out of the house every night. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cut back and do Majestic. Majestic will always be there and then do less of all these other things that I do. Mm -hmm. you know. And I think that probably it's would be... a tough day, man. But I mean, yeah, I, I get it. Yeah, I mean. you know, but it's... Um, but even like with rehearsals, I mean, you know when you're rehearsing a show, it's... I know. You do it, you do it, you do it, and then when you're finally done, you love it. But when you're finally done, you're like, oh my God, I have a night off. You know, like it this just week, recently happened. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I yeah. took them away. I go. What are we gonna do? Uh, yes. Yeah. I said, what? Are, there's hours available here. Yeah. Hours. <laughs> you don't yep. think about it, but it's like this weekend. I have rehearsals and I have the my church gigs on Saturday and Sunday. But I have Saturday night off. Sunday I have church in the morning and I have the rest of the day off. Now I'll probably work from home and work on a majestic of will. brochure or of something. You will. But just the idea that I'm like, I don't have anything to do and I can't have beer. So it's going to be really bad. I'm going to have to figure out. I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do. But you know what I mean. Once you know, and that's even with the gun quit. As much as I love playing the Thursday, Friday, Sundays, when we get to the point after Columbus Day where we cut the Sundays, I'm like, I have Sunday nights off. This is great. Man. You know, and it's just nice to have that stop and breathe. Moments. It's going to feel really good for the first week or two, and then you're going to be like, how can I fill this? This is an awful void. No, that's not. It's funny. The Sunday nights, I've gotten good about just saying, I'm not just going to get ready for the week and just kind of. So. You know what I have found is that with some of the spare time, it, which is really nice, I get now to go see stuff. Right. And there's so many friends doing so many shows, which I can't get to do when you're in one. Yeah. Because they're overlapping. So I and I'm actually found myself looking at my schedule, going, "Oh, I could go see that show yeah. this weekend." I get. I think that that's the other issue with as many the, all the companies that we talked about at the beginning of this. Yeah. Is that we're all so busy doing our own theaters and our own shows. We never have time to see other stuff, which is why Theater Wars is good, too, because you start to see what other people are doing. Yeah. Because it's so easy to get, like, you know, I know, like, you know, uh, was it Actor Singers Fringe did Cannibal the Musical. Never comes around. And I had seen Angelica, the director, she says, well, just come. Come on a dress rehearsal if you want. I'm like, I, I, I want to see it. I want to see it. And it just came across my feet again for some reason a week ago. And I went, that was a month ago. I missed it. How did I miss this? You I know? did the same thing with Katie Collins. <sighs> I think if she just oh, had a second the, show. Oh, in the hat box. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I was doing stuff up in jeans, you know, and I'm like, no, I'll get there. I'll make it. I'll make it. Yeah. Life came, interfered that weekend yeah. I was going to do it. Couldn't get there. Now she just did this other one. I forget the name of it. The Love Loss or whatever. Yeah. And I, I didn't get to see it either. Well, you can come see Katie, and she's in Judy's Scary Little Christmas. She is? Yes. Well, I have That's all an all-star cast. Okay. Yeah, it's really... It's, I'll, um, love to come, I'll come see you. Yeah. Uh, That's the first weekend of December. So post it on Facebook. Unless you're doing a, you know, a Christmas, a Christmas, I'm not, I'm Christmas not. carol somewhere. <laughs> I have been tapped. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have well, there's only 27 it. productions of it happening in the first three weeks of November. Just, hey, you know, and I always say, if that's what the theater's tradition is, I good know. for them. I and know. I always say, and I know people, that it's not a palace thing, folks. I always say I hear great things about the palaces, Christmas Carol. They make it better every single year. Yeah. And I always tell people, go see Christmas Carol at the palace and then come to the Majestic to see what we're doing because we're doing Elf the Musical. And it's just something different, oh, you know? That's great. You know, so it's, um, but yeah, nothing against the people that do Christmas Carol. But I always laugh. I know, I know. There's just so many of them. It's like Annie. Yeah. Jeez, yeah, every, yeah. every group is doing Annie at some point, you yeah. know. It's terrible. Ma Mamma Mia last year. Mamma Mia was last Mama year, Mia. yep. My God, I get so tired of seeing Mamma Mia before. But every group wanted to do it. Yeah. And we people were, honestly, loved it. Honestly, we were going to do it until we heard Active Singers was going to do it. It was on their schedule. My philosophy for 30 years has been, if I, before I announce my season, if I see a show on someone else's schedule within, in this area, I will take it off my schedule. Yeah, good for you. I mean, it's not always a, the same courtesy is not always afforded to us. Yeah. Uh, right, which yeah. is why if you see we're doing a show and someone else is doing it, then they've put it on their schedule after we announced. But uh, but no, I'm always big. And we were going to do Mamma Mia. That was going to be the Jekyll and Hyde slot. Okay. And then we said, nope, they're doing it right, before, right around the same time. That would not be fair. Yeah. And so, and we could do it. We could have cast it. We could have, but why, you why would we do that? You probably would have a good draw, too. Why would we do that? You know, so it's, um, so we did Jekyll and Hyde. And honestly, Jekyll and Hyde was another show I hadn't done forever and ever and ever. And I was like. I heard it went well. Yeah, it was great, great production. People yeah. came. It was, so. Yeah, but yeah, so it's all good. Yeah, I hear you. 
All right, brother. Ooh. How long have you been going? Almost oh, two, two hours. Yeah, yeah. God, I like to you talk. You don't think, huh? I like to talk. Uh, Sorry. I know. Yeah. Well, You're not going to get a transcript of this phone conversation. <laughs> just <so you> know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for not talking politics, by the way. <laughs> I'm tired of it. I just Me too. It, I, <laughs> and, and we're in New Hampshire, folks, so we're oh, in for I just know. this bumpy oh, ride. I just know. Like, it's going to oh. be a long winter. I just knew someone said they're going to go off Facebook for a year. I'm like, oh, God, I wish I could do that. I know. I can't. I, I thought I about could. it. But uh, it's the only way I have of finding out what other people are doing. That's what I don't is. use it. Yeah. I don't. I don't post what I'm eating. Yep. I don't post where I am. I just want to see what other people are doing. Yeah. I'm like, okay, it's perfect for that. So if I get rid of it, I, I never know what yeah. people are doing. Well, that's why. I mean, I have friends on the West Coast, and it's, I, talk to them all the time. Uh, when I was in Florida the past time, I met these two guys in Prague. Now, obviously, they're like eight thousand hours ahead of us. Yeah. But um, eight thousand. That's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. yeah. They're like you know three years ahead of us. <laughs> uh, but you know, but I can keep in touch with them. I might not ever see them again. Right. You know, but uh, you know, just keep in touch. And, it's and nice I have a love hate relationship with Facebook. Love hate. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, but what are you going to do? Just uh, I'm like 15 minutes is all I can take sometimes of it. You know, and I'm like, God, done, done, put it away, put it away. Does it go to your phone? No, thank oh, good. God. That's oh no, I, it is. I do have it on my phone, oh. but I don't have any notifications. Oh, good, it. good. All right, because that's what. Yeah. So the only time it opens up is when I want to open it yeah. up. So. I'm, I'm not but we could change our opinions about Facebook if you'd sponsor Ray. That is correct. Theater, that is correct. Is, yeah. Yes, we're open. We're, we're open. open. Yes. We're open. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything has a price, you know. It does. <laughs> I am open. <laughs> That's a good place to okay. end. <laughs> Thanks for listening. New Hampshire Unscripted is produced by Square Peg Productions. This podcast, as well as all of our others, can be found on iTunes as well as SoundCloud. And if you'd like information about upcoming productions, please check out our Facebook page as well as our website, which is www.squarepegnh.com.